Hello, and welcome to a special SETI Live. I am your host, Beth Johnson, and I am joined today by uh, SETI astronomer Tom Esposito. Hey, Tom. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm pumped. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. So neither neither you nor I are in the path of totality, but that doesn't mean that we're not excited about this. So um, what what are you looking forward to today? Uh, I'm definitely excited. I've, I've been on a strictly solar schedule for about a week now. I wake up when, at sunrise, go to bed at sunset. Uh, I went so far, I, I went outside and got a moderate sunburn yesterday just to soak it in. So I have this rosy glow. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, I've just been uh, looking forward to getting the views from our folks spread out across the country. Um, I haven't uh, been lucky enough to see one of these in person. So um, looking forward to living vicariously through them. Fantastic. Uh, so what what's going I mean, where where are you at? You're in in Richmond, California. I'm in San yeah. Jose. So we're, again, not in the path of totality, which you can kind of see behind me here. And we're, okay, I can do this. I'm a weather person, right? Okay, we're over like here. And mm -hmm. so as you can see, that path is nowhere near us. So. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get a partial view. I think we'll see something like a 30%-ish eclipse, um, even all the way over here, far away from that path. All right. Yeah. Uh, my understanding is it will start in about... 10 minutes or so, and then we'll peak about an hour later. So we get about two hours, I think, of, you know, a partial eclipse time. But the peak of it for us will be uh, in about an hour. So um, I seem to have sun right now. I can see the leaves, the shadows of the leaves on the tree outside my window. So hopefully I can I can take a look at those later. Uh, I want to I want to say a few words before we bring in Frank and get the show on the road. Um, this live stream is uh, sponsored by the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, who have uh, provided us with the funds to do things like have Starlinks. So thank you to uh, Starlink uh, for providing uh, some lovely in the field uh, internet connections so that we can actually bring you all of these people um, from across the nation and into Canada so that we can we can we can actually show you all of these wonderful skies that we're hopefully going to see. Um, weather forecasts are starting to clear up for a few places um, and I want to welcome in uh, viewers from around the world. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. We have people watching and this is an amazing list to begin with. We have people watching from France, uh, on a, a couple people on planes, Colorado, Florida, uh, and hi to Franck's family in Montpelier. Uh, let's see, Switzerland, India, uh, Manitoba, the Netherlands, Pennsylvania, Germany, and Ireland. So thank you everybody for being here and the UK. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Welcome into the SETI Live. Um, we are going to be streaming for the next three-ish hours, and we are going to be bringing you views from the Path of Totality all the way from Texas to Ontario, Canada. So with a lot of luck and some good planning on our part, we will hopefully be able to bring you totality at various points. Um, oh, wow. Welcome in from Portugal, Guatemala, and Romania. Wow. Okay. So... The goal was to get people who weren't in the path of totality to be able to see this. So I am so happy that you are all joining us here. And now I would like to welcome in uh, Franck Marchis. Hey, hi, Franck. everybody. How are you? Good. Hey, Franck. So Franck is in Austin and already starting to get a bit of a crowd. You've got a you've got a party going on. How, tell us about what's going on where you are. Yeah, uh, we are at East Travis Heights uh, in South Austin. I'm at fr my friends uh, Dan and Rich, and um, yeah, here in Texas, what they do when there is an event, a game, uh, an astronomical event, whatever, they organize a party. So we have a front yard party with friends and uh, neighbors. Uh, we promoted the event, and we have some people who are going to come uh, as the eclipse is happening. And hopefully we're all going to witness together the totality uh, is clearing up here. And based on the prediction, from astronomers, not the one that you have from the news, 
uh, it should be clear exactly at the time of the eclipse and then uh, and then cloudy again one hour later. So let's see. It's going to be um, an interesting, uh, interesting day. Frankly, this morning when I woke up, it was so cloudy that I said, mm, this is not going to happen. But hey, we, uh, we have the, the gods of the weather with us today. So let's see. Here's here's hoping. Uh, like I said, we we have a jam packed schedule. We've got people coming in from all over the place who are going to be joining us to talk about their views, to talk about solar science. So um, we're very excited to bring this all to you, and hopefully we can we can keep things rolling uh, with some sky watching. So, Frank, what uh, telescope have you brought with you? Uh, so behind me, we have the Unistellar Odyssey telescope, the Odyssey Pro. That's the newest one we released in January. Uh, he is equipped with this solar filter. And um, the cap this telescope is capable of finding the sun. I know it looks easy, but it's not that easy to find the sun. And uh, we'll follow it as the eclipse is happening. So in hopefully when the clouds will let us do it, we will be able to, uh, to lock the telescope on the sun. And you will see the disk is going to be a disk in the, on, the, on an image and you see the, the progression of the eclipse slowly happening as the the moon is passing between us and the sun so we are here well the reason i'm i came here in south austin is because we are going to have totality we are on the path of totality i forgot exactly the how long it will last but i think it's one minute and ten ten seconds and um it's going to be uh, fun for people here. I think a lot of people behind me never experienced an eclipse before. So we're going to all sit together uh, and enjoy this eclipse. Do we want to talk about the Ombra and what is the Ombra? Typically? Yeah, absolutely. But let me let me just remind people really quickly, if you are looking at the sun, please make sure that you have solar eclipse glasses with you. The only time you can take those off to look at the sun is during the few moments of totality if you are in the path. If you are not in the path, keep those glasses on the whole time and try very, very hard not to look around the edges. So keep them up against your eyes. Um, there we go. <laughs> I do not have a pair. So I will be I will be staying right here at my computer and looking at uh, the cloud, the the uh, shadows of, of the leaves on the tree outside, which is a, a neat little trick you can use because yep. you can see how the shadows change. So there, there are a lot of options. Um, you can get a colander, take it outside, hold it. You can see the pattern in the sunlight um, and the shadows. And now those those holes in your colander will change. And so it'll, it's kind of a neat little effect. So there are ways to safely view if you do not have solar eclipse classes, but do not look directly at the sun as a reminder. So, so all right, let's start off with the basics. What is an eclipse? Why can we see them from here on Earth? Is that for me or that's for Tom? <laughs> Go for it, Frank. So an eclipse is is basically the passage of a, an astronomical body in front of, in front of another one. What we're gonna see today is a solar eclipse. So in this case, the moon is passing between us and Earth, Earth, and the sun. So what if you were observing from far away, you will see the shadow of the moon moving in a very specific trajectory along along the along the path of the centrality basically and that's the shadow we call it the ombra so the ombra is uh, has a size that varies depending of the geometry and so on so i think someone's going to talk about that but typically here in in austin the ombra is 200 kilometer so that means that if you're not located in this path of 200 kilometer you will not see the totality you will you will see a partial eclipse so that's that's why we are here to to be located on the Umbra on the path of totality in this tiny band of 200 kilometers. And what I heard that there is more than 100 million people who moved in the U.S. along the path of totality uh, today to see and to witness this this eclipse. Yeah, I I think one of my favorite uh, graphics I have seen this past week was the the graphic of Airbnb reservations and and how full it was and this yellow uh, line that you see behind me was basically just red with with booked up reservations where everybody was uh, uh, 
getting ready to to see it. Yeah. I have friends on the road who are still on the road looking for that perfect spot. Um, people on planes. There's all kinds of amazing attempts to do this. Um, very exciting. Uh, Frank, is this your? How many? How many total total solar eclipses have you seen? How many? You know, how many annular? What What's your record here? So I've not seen that many. The first one I tried to see, to see was in 1996. It was in north of Paris, and it was cloudy. So I mm -hmm. experienced the darkness only, but which was already an interesting experience. And uh, several years ago, I forgot which year exactly, 2015 or 17? 17. I saw the, 17. I saw the total eclipse uh, from Oregon. And that was impressive. Mm -hmm. I was with my kids and uh, and the family, and we basically saw the totality. The sky was clear, and that was my real full total eclipse. I've seen multiple annular eclipses. I see. I saw one in Japan, and uh, and I tried to 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 see the one last year, um, but it did not work because it was cloudy in Oregon. So yeah, I've kind of. I'm not an eclipse chaser, but I, I've the, the last. 10 years, I've seen several of them, and I've, I'm getting hooked, in fact. I'm starting liking it more and more to go to these places to experience an eclipse. Because when you have seen one, once one, you kind of get it. You know why people are so excited about it. It's a very deep experience. It's something that you see the cosmic ballet. You suddenly realize that, yeah, the sky is moving and there is something, spe something special happening at this exact moment. Plus, it's a nice story to remember. It's a story to tell to your friends. And there is always something happening during an eclipse. I don't know what's going to happen today, but something may happen. <laughs> something fun, something interesting. I don't know, an event, lightning. The power is going to cut off. I don't know. We will see. <laughs> Tom, how about you? Uh, what's your eclipse experience? Uh, so I think the first one I remember seeing was 1994. I was I was eight, I think, uh, seven or eight. Um, there was one that passed near my home in New York. It was uh, it was a um, I, we didn't see a total eclipse, but I remember while looking through my dad's welding mask because uh, that has glass tinted glass dark enough to to safely look at the sun. Uh, and then it was a while after that before I saw another one. I saw it in uh, 2012. There was a partial. I think that passed through California where I was. And then 2017, there was a pretty deep one here in Northern California that uh, I saw through clouds and which actually mm -hmm. worked out okay. Um, uh, so I've seen a few, but never a total. So I'm a little bit jealous, uh, but um, again, I, I'm looking forward to the views we get from people like Frank. I, I am very definitely jealous. I have never seen a total solar eclipse. For some reason, I thought I had, but a friend of mine corrected me recently and said it was only a partial where I was at the time. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to fix that myself uh, one of these many years. It's it's going to be a while. Uh, but, you know, there's there's time and I, I do plan to do it. And at least, you know, I get the fun of doing this with all of you. So I'm I'm pretty excited. Um, and hopefully, it's clearing hopefully, up here. Yeah, it will. <laughs> Your, I can see that your uh, your uh, your telescope view, and and it's not at the moment for you, but it is clearing <laughs> up. So hopefully soon we'll be able to show some some actual uh, footage of the sun. Right now everybody's kind of got clouds, so yeah. <laughs> and I, we, I are... can see that we have someone setting up in the background. So hopefully soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is important is that we are not going to see the eclipse all together at the same time. And that's uh, that's what we uh, we're going to experience today. We are in Austin, so we are the first station who's going to be able to see the eclipse, the full. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as we progress over time, people will experience the eclipse with other group, other in other state. Uh, and I think the last station, where's located, the last one, the northern one. Uh, the northern one is going to be the one in Ontario. Ontario, okay, with Amory. So, and the difference of time is. Uh, uh, of course, I don't remember the exact number, but it's typically uh, one hour or something like that, right? Yeah, we, it's, we, I think we've got our, our totality spread out across several different uh, different points. Yeah. Um, because the umbra is going at... Um, uh, the speed of the umbra is something like 1,000 to 5,000 miles per hour. 
the speed change depending of the ah, my iPad is hot. Okay, let me just put this on the side. Yeah, so the <laughs> the speed of the Umbra uh, is one between one thousand and five thousand miles per hour, so two thousand kilo two thousand to eight thousand kilometer per hour. So that's the reason we are not going to sit all together at the same times. Austin will be the first tonight, today, and then uh, the last one will be in Ontario. Mm -hmm. And that's that's for our stream. Obviously, you can see from behind me the other way that it does start down here in Mexico. So uh, there there are places we just didn't have anybody down there. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could not be everywhere. So we decided to uh, we decided the station based how convenient it was to have an internet connection, to have uh, uh, to station which is stable, know the people. I mean, it's great to uh, to go in the middle of nowhere to see an eclipse, but if you want to share the experience with people, you need more than just uh, just yourself. You need to have a telescope. You need to carry it there. You need to bring power, Starlink, if you don't have internet, and all of this. So that's the reason we are not everywhere. But but seven yeah. station is good. Yeah. And and as as we learned from from last year's partial eclipse, you know the the internet connection is an important thing when running a live stream. So yes, we learn <laughs> we learn together. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, we did. Yeah. And so, uh, like I said, uh, thank you again to Starlink for providing uh, some uh, connections for us. So um, we do have some some Starlink dishes, and uh, they're working. So. Um, We've we've tested. Everybody has has checked out everything, and so hopefully we will be able to see some stuff. I think uh, we're still working on on some people in the background here. But um, so, Frank, we've talked about you know the the how of it, but why does this work? Why can we see this? You know, I there's there's a picture going around right now of of Phobos passing. Uh, in between Mars and the sun, but it's not blocking out the sun. It, so why does this work for us here on Earth when it, it doesn't work anywhere else, it seems? Well, it does work because the distance of the moon and the distance of the sun with respect to Earth make that the, the moon has almost the same apparent size than the sun. And that's the reason the moon can completely occult the sun allowing us to basically see the surrounding of the sun, the corona and that some of us will experience today if they have a clear weather. So it's a very, um, it's a very, inter it's very interesting that the moon has the same apparent size than the sun. It's a coincidence, but it's happening at the moment that we are a civilization capable of talking about it. So it's great. I'm saying that because the moon is not going to be always at the same distance. We know that the moon is drifting away and um, then it will be too small to fall uh, in the future. In millions of years, the moon will be smaller than the sun, so you will not be able to experience an, uh, an eclipse. So this is the right time to do it, guys. I think we have a little bit yeah. of time, but it is good. Literally. Don't waste your chances. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, we did not mention, but the path of totality is small, and it does... Um, and eclipses does do not happen. Eclipses do not happen everywhere. So uh, right now in the U.S., we were lucky. We are two in a row: the annular one last year and this total one this year. Uh, we're not gonna see another eclipse in the U.S. for quite a while. So that's the reason 100 million people move along the path of totality uh, to experience this eclipse. All right. I think it's is it 2045? That's the next total eclipse in the crossing the United States in North America. Something I'll let you like check that. that in the future. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's 2045. So, so it's a bit of a wait. Yeah. yeah, that's that's one of the things. I mean, so there's oh okay. If anybody wants to have like some fun, go ahead and Google solar eclipse. Google has has uh done an Easter egg for today. Um, just so you know. <laughs> I just got to discover that. So I'm now sharing it with all of you. Um, yeah. So if you want to know when there's going to be time and date, NASA, uh, people update Wikipedia all the time. So there, there's a lot of different places where you can check out when there are going to be eclipses and where they're going to be. And and they're all going to have maps that look like the one behind me. Uh, so it'll, it'll show you, you know, times, 
um, the percentages, that's what all these are. These are the percentage covered. And then as well as this, you know, 100% uh, path of totality. And so, you know, there's there's options. They just don't come around very often. But we we do have what are called eclipse seasons. And there, there are two eclipses a year, basically. Um, and but they're usually usually partial. Um, yeah. The the moon does not. It it, it kind of goes up and down in its path as well as across. So sometimes, and I have I have a hockey puck. So here's here's this. So here's the sun and the moon. But sometimes the moon is up here, and sometimes the moon is down here. So it doesn't always work exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's also interesting that we are in a, in a moment in time where we can predict them in in advance and know exactly where they're going to happen. I mean, this is not something that was doable 100 years ago, 200 years ago. So we um, we make it easy to plan for people to see an eclipse. You just look at the maps on the internet, find when there is one not too far away from you or a trip you want to do, and uh, plan a trip in advance to go to see an eclipse. There will be one in north of Spain in two years, if I remember properly. Yeah, and there, there are there are literally companies who do travel that that basically you just contact them and they will arrange the travel and the locations for you and figure all of that out. So if you really, really, really want to go see an eclipse, there there are definitely people that will assist you with that. If it's not just a drive an hour, like for yeah. some of the people I know who are doing that. Unfortunately for me, it was a fly several hours. So. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's plenty of cruises I know that you know they'll sail you into the middle of the ocean because a lot of the, there are more eclipses they just don't cross land where there's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I I I know I our CEO president and CEO Bill Diamond has done at least one eclipse cruise that I remember since I've been with SETI since he and I have been with SETI. So I I it is doable. It is definitely doable. And there like I said there are companies out there that will happily make that happen for you. <laughs> I'm going to welcome in uh, people. We Wow, we've, okay, uh, coming in from a whole bunch of places uh, before we get to our first interview. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, scrolling back. Okay. Uh, North Carolina, some more from Texas, Japan, uh, Spain, Maryland, Ohio, Indiana, New York. Uh, someone from else from San Jose, California. Hello. Uh, Netherlands. Uh more France, Germany. Hello, Ron in Louisiana on the bayou. Uh, Missouri. Uh, more from Texas and the UK. Uh, Ontario, Canada. Uh, Mexico. Uh, welcome in. Uh, more Ireland, Ohio. Uh, up in Sacramento. Uh, La Réunion, France. Ah. There you go. Uh, Korea. Uh, more France, Florida, Argentina, and Italy. Wow. Okay. Literally around the world. Thank you everybody for being here. And, um, I, we're going to bring in our first guest. Um, so Frank stick around. Um, we'll be back with you in a bit. Okay. Uh, but first I want to bring in, uh, Steve Trimberger, who is on our board of trustees, uh, okay. Oh no, I think he's, I think his connection, of course, because that's how, that's how the internet works. I'm going to. He's been eclipsed already. We can't even he's see He's been him. eclipsed so already. I know. I know. We'll bring Frank back in for a minute and see if we can get Steve's connection sorted out. And I started out my uh, iPad is not working. So you may be able to see the sun. I don't know. Oh, wait, it looks like Steve's back. So okay. um, we'll be back. I know Ariel's got hers up too. So I think we can look at the sun from somewhere. All right, Frank, be back with you in okay. a few. Hello, Steve. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna add Ariel's uh, view for the moment. There we go. Hello, oh, Steve. There we are. Hello. Good Hello, morning. Good, good Steve. afternoon. Well, yeah. Good afternoon. You're, uh, the, uh, I am in Waco, Texas, and it's been uh, in a, a bit of an adventure already. Uh, if you may have heard the forecast for. I'm losing Steve's audio a little bit. Oh, I know. I let me see if I can. 
So here, I'm trying to there we trying go. To get the, the various audio things to work here. Yeah, we got we got you back. Sorry about that. Uh oh, and then we lost you again. We may have to come back to Steve. While we're waiting, though, we can see the beginning of an eclipse here. Yeah. You can see that. Ariel's, uh, Ariel's got clouds coming in and out, but you can see just the hint of uh, of that coming in. Yep, on the lower I'm right gonna there. In, I'm going to bring in Ariel while we wait for, for Steve to... Sorry, Ariel. Should have given you more warning than that. Hello, Ariel. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you? How's your how's your rooftop viewing going? It's going well. You know, so far this morning, the clouds were pretty thick and I wasn't feeling super good. But all of a sudden they've started to break up and I've been able to look at the sun now. And yeah, the eclipse is starting. So we're all really excited. This is this is really nice. This is a good view. Thank you so much for, for being able to do this. Now, you were the one of the ones yeah. that has a, a Starlink up and running, correct? Yeah, I do have a Starlink. It's, it's right next to me. It was really easy to use. It's super cool that I was able to do that. Um, but yeah, so I'm streaming to you from Starlink now. And and what which telescope are you using? I'm using the EV scope too. You can see it there. Okay. So that's also, Tom, you have one of those behind you, correct? Yeah. Oh, this way. Yeah. That's an EV scope too as well. Yep. <laughs> so that's a... So we're actually... Yeah, go ahead. No, I was, I was just that looking at the the way the the moon is starting to come in there. That looks pretty amazing, and that sunspot that yeah. I've been chasing for the last four days is still making its way across. Yeah, I focused as best as I could with the wind shaking the sun like that, but I think you can you can make out a bit of the structure of the sunspot, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah you can definitely see can... there is a little bit of wind shake. Just that's that's when yeah. this. When it's moving around a little bit, that's the wind just blowing the telescope. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. But uh, yeah. when it's not shaking, uh, it does look pretty good. There's that big one in the middle, and there's a little sunspot down to the left of that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely been uh, seeing that that sun, so that big sunspot has it started uh, on the very left hand side uh, when I started uh, running tests with people on Thursday and Friday, oh. and now now it's already in the middle. So that's. And then we have, oh, yeah, that new that other one coming in there from the left. So that's pretty cool. And then you've got really cool. coming in from the right. This is an amazing view. So, so Ariel, where are you at? I'm in Dallas, Texas right now. And so, yeah, the weather forecast was very hit or miss. But right now we're hitting. So I hope it stays this way, at least until totality. Uh. Oh, uh, someone is asking, and that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, enhanced view on or off for Eclipse viewing on the Odyssey Pro? Do we do we know the answer to that? Ooh. So I believe uh, it will. The Odyssey will automatically turn on um, kind of a sun mode as soon as you point to the sun, and it will uh, enhance the image with that kind of um, built-in unistellar technology. Uh, so you are seeing uh, the enhanced vision image uh, without having to do anything extra. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's uh, adjusting automatically as things change. I was having trouble earlier because of the clouds and it was trying to adjust the gain of the telescope and whatnot. And it was kind of affecting the brightness in a weird way. Um, but now it's been nice with all the clouds. It can adjust really well. It looks, it looks, it looks great. So, uh, yeah. what time? What time do you have? Uh, so, what time is it there? Uh, it's uh, twelve thirty there for you. It's twelve thirty here, and I believe totality is at one forty for me this time. So, okay. I have a little over an hour until totality. And you're gonna keep your telescope on there the whole time? Yeah, I plan to. As long as the clouds stay away, we're staying on the sun. Did you uh, did you bring eclipse glasses for people, or uh, are, are I, people bringing their own? Um, we brought a, a handful of eclipse glasses, but a lot of people brought their own. But yeah, have some ready to go. <laughs> Fantastic! All right, we're gonna try and bring Steve back because it looks like looks like I have okay. him back. So um, one moment, Ariel. Thank you. We'll okay. be back with you in a few minutes. Sounds good. Hey All right, Steve. Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's a bit. Of a, it's a was an adventure and still remains an adventure. Uh, 
<laughs> All right. So, so you are, you are in Waco, Texas. Uh, what, what is going on there where you are? So Waco, Texas is actually pretty quiet, uh, considering the eclipse is on, uh, actually quiet except for the background music. Yeah. Uh, the uh, forecast in the, uh, this morning, the weather looked really bad. And so we were planning to leave and, uh, head West, uh, to, to search for clearer skies. But the weather kept improving, and we finally decided that, uh, nope, we're just going to stay put. or We're going to be where we are. It is currently uh, broken clouds uh, and some high clouds. So, uh, yeah, pretty much like what you were seeing on the uh, uh, with, with the telescope. Uh, it's about what we would what look like here. Uh, so the clouds pass in front of the sun, so you're, it diminishes that quite a bit. But uh, still... Uh, Pretty exciting, and we are really happy we to that we stayed here instead of chasing this chasing the sun across Texas. Uh, we're uh, we think we did the right thing. You never know with this. It's it, it's kind of funny, right? This is a you know you don't get a rain delay, uh, you don't get a second chance. It's just you got what you got, and that's what we're doing. We're yeah, you know, it's on now. It's live, and here we are. We're making the best of it. Yeah, the the live aspect and the 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 inability to reschedule anything is sort of the the challenge here. <laughs> it, it does add a, a, a an intensity that uh, few there are not that many experiences in your life where they have the, yeah this kind of intensity. So like getting married and going to an eclipse is kind of what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you gotta be you gotta be there and you gotta do the right things. And you can do both at the same time if you're really good. <laughs> so, so yeah, we're uh, actually we, we just we are uh, just finishing lunch, and uh, going to head right back outside and uh, and uh, enjoy the enjoy the day. Go out and see the can see see go out and not see the sun. It's the plan. So, who are who all are you with on this uh, particular trip? So I've got uh, uh, got my my whole family here. So, uh, and we uh, my. My wife was with me, and my all my my three children, and uh, their spouses, and my grandson. So we got everybody, and come in from all over. So my son came in from Virginia, one daughter from San Jose, California, one daughter from Glendale, California, and we I live in Reno. So we all got together here in Texas. Is uh is this your first? Is this going to be your first total solar eclipse experience? No, I did uh, I did twenty seventeen. I went up in Idaho, and. Uh, that was that was really something. Uh, very clear skies, and actually kind of spoiled us because. But okay, you go out there and sit down and watch the sun. Uh, so we're it's a bit more, uh, uh, a bit more exciting here. But then a couple of annular eclipses, uh, including the one just uh, just last fall in in Nevada. Uh, annular isn't nearly as good as total. If you've seen an annular eclipse, you haven't experienced a total eclipse yet. That's for sure. The other annular eclipse I saw was uh, actually. I was at the Hat Creek Radio Telescope when the when the annual annual eclipse went through there. I think that was 2012, something like that. Uh, and those the, the, those eclipses are pretty good, pretty good. But uh, yeah, the uh, the total is uh, is a qualitative difference, substantially different. So, uh, go ahead, Tom. Well, I was just curious. Uh, you happen to be at Hat Creek, which is a radio telescope facility, right? That's correct. Um, were they listening to the sun by any chance? Because the sun is, I believe, noisy in the radio. Does it quiet during a solar uh, solar eclipse at all? Were they looking, listening? Uh, that that I don't know, but I would I would expect that the moon would interfere somewhat. Hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, it was just it happened to work out to uh, 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 SETI was having a, a an event there, and and uh, it was a good a chance to to see the telescope it was. Uh, Pretty, pretty new at that point, and uh, pretty exciting to, to uh, fun, it's a, it's a fun place to visit, and, uh, and, and it's just, I, I just, and I love, love the uh, astronomy. I love the, love to walk through there. But it was a great place to, to see that eclipse. Cool. So, Steve, on, on that note, how, how did you become involved with uh, the SETI Institute and end up on the board of trustees? What attracted you to the, to, to the cause, so to speak? Well, I actually knew about the SETI Institute, Institute for a long time, and it had been uh, and had been uh, in my uh, industrial career. I was responsible for doing some funding for uh, 
for academics, and uh, we actually funded some uh, some SETI work. Uh, and so that was that was pretty pretty interesting. And uh, there's a there's a great story that's probably too long for this call, but uh, but uh, it was uh, it uh, was a lesson, and uh, we funded some SETI research, and they did some research that turned out to uh, to be very valuable for us commercially at uh, at Xilinx, where I was at the time. So I was doing that, and then. Uh, uh, got connected with the uh, the big picture science radio uh, and uh, podcast, and uh, and that was very exciting. And so, just uh, being able to to be part of that kind of that outreach and just talking about real science, especially you know 20 years ago when sometimes uh, what they said was real science wasn't real science. And so it was <laughs> it was nice uh, to have you know, real scientists talking about real science in a way that was really accessible to people. And I liked that a lot. And so I, so I, was, uh, I was supporting that. And, uh, and then that sort of one thing led to another and said, look, uh, maybe I could do something with the, with the Board of Trustees. And, and some of my background was, uh, was relevant to where the, where the Institute was looking to go with, uh, with some of the intellectual property and, and uh, looking at some of the government, governance uh, items. So, it's been a, it's been really exciting uh, to get more and more involved. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for for being here today for joining us. Um, what? How long is a totality going to be? And and you're going to be outside observing with the family? That's right. It's it's scheduled to be over four minutes where we are, which was wow. really something because you know when we did the one a couple a few years ago, it was only two minutes of totality, and that was just. Yeah, uh, just ex to extremely exciting to have to have twice as much as you know, I. It's it's an amazing to look up and see a great big hole in the sky. It's very strange, and uh, yeah, I can tell why why the ancients were totally terrified. <laughs> so, and other things that will happen: uh, clouds will dissipate. You know, certain types of clouds will dissipate. The animals will uh, like go quiet, and the night bugs will come in, and, and it it just completely changes around you. Are you looking forward to experiencing that? Well, I, I don't know how much of that I'm going to see. But I will, it will be interesting, yes. But I, you know, like I said, I'm not sure how much we'll see because uh, maybe the freeway will go quiet or the roads will go quiet. <laughs> we are in town. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, there was a, we had an opportunity to, uh, uh, to go down to the zoo and, uh, and, and maybe, maybe you'll we'll talk to somebody who's down at the zoo because they have a big event going on down there. But uh, yeah, I, my number one priority is to be in the moment and experience the eclipse. Uh, so I am. Uh, you know, I have cameras, and my dad taught me. You know, you, when you when you go to Yosemite, don't take a picture of Half Dome. They have real good pictures down at the gift shop. Uh, but uh, enjoy it, and if you get it, if you can manage a picture of yourself in front of you, that's okay. But uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna be in the moment. We're gonna. If we want to look at pictures, we'll download them online from online later. But we are going to and pay attention to the eclipse. Maybe we'll notice the animals, or maybe we'll just notice ourselves. Oh, fantastic! Well, Steve, we are going to let you get to it. So um, it looks like if 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 Ariel and and Frank's uh, earlier images were any indication, it looks like things have started. So. Um, Go grab your eclipse glasses and and your family and have a wonderful wonderful time. Well, thank you very much. I did take a peek out there a few minutes ago. It's uh, the, it, it's it's eclipsing. It's on. It's on. <laughs> All right. Well, we will let you get to the enjoyment part of it. Thank you again for for joining us today and and sticking with it. So, and we'll thank talk you. to you day. afterwards at some point. Thank you so much. Very good. Bye bye. Sure. Thanks, Steve. Bye. All right, we're going to bring Ariel back in since we kind of flipped things around a little bit. So, Ariel, I'm giving you a warning. Here we go. Hello. And looks like you've got, well, on and off, you've got a view here. Yeah, there's a bit of clouds coming in right now. But yeah, every now and again, it peeks through. It's, I mean, it's, it's, what you're getting when we get to see it looks really good. So how is, how is the crowd? Is it picking up up there? It is. So there's actually an event here with the art history department of SMU and they're here and they're going to talk about, you know, some of the art history related things to the sun. So that's kind of fun. But yeah, so it's picking up. There's cookies and popcorn. So it's pretty fun. 
And uh, how many people do you think you've got up there right now? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm so bad at estimating. 30 to 20, 30. And you're on top of a hotel, correct? I am on top of a hotel. And SMU is right behind me. So they just came over. They did their class here today, which is kind of fun. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So, wow, I, it's just looking really amazing. So, yeah. so Ariel, uh, what's what's been your eclipse experiences so far? So the only eclipse I've seen, I've seen one, and I saw it in 2017. I went to Portland to see it, um, and that was awesome. It was really surprising. It was my first experiencing a, an eclipse in the path of totality. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect, but it really blew me away so it, it kind of made me i don't know want to chase eclipses now um yeah i don't know i think it's something else i think it's one of the most beautiful things you can see in nature if you get the chance you have to go to the path of totality and seeing this is cool too as it's coming in it's exciting but seeing that full totality is like a different experience so i gotta see it again <laughs> So Ariel, you're you're the comets lead for Unistellar and the Citizen Science. Um, obviously, not a comet, but there is a comet thing going on today. So can you tell everybody yes. a little bit about what's going on in the cometary world that is exciting today? Yeah. Okay. The exciting thing in the cometary world today is that there's a, a comet that is just barely naked eye level brightness right now. Like if you were to have clear skies at night, you could go out and um, try to see it with your naked eye. Uh, definitely with binoculars and definitely with a telescope, obviously. Um, but it's in a really cool position right now where it's just a bit to the upper left of the sun, uh, far away enough that during totality, if you have really clear skies, you might be able to pick it out, especially if you have binoculars and know where to look. Um, but for me, it might be hard with the clouds. But if you have a clear sky, I definitely recommend during the four-ish minutes of totality, try to just take a peek and see if you could see something. I'm hoping, I'm really looking forward to people taking pictures of the comet with the eclipse and Jupiter is nearby too. And there'll be a couple other planets. So that'll be cool to see. So yeah, we have a really bright comet out right now and you can see it during the twilight like time of totality. And, and I think so it's, people... it's, up, it's up, sorry, Beth. I think it's, it's up into the left from the sun. Is that right? Up, up into the left, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and and what is the name of the comet so that people can uh, look it up on yeah. Star Chart? You can look up 12P Hans Brooks. Okay. Both, all of it, some of it, you'll find it for sure. All right. Fantastic. And uh, just out of curiosity, can the EV scopes find that? So normally, yes, it has to be, the EV scopes do a telescope orientation. So they figure out where they are pointing in the sky and then it can point anywhere, right? It has this smart feature. During the eclipse, it's, guiding on the sun using a, a different method um, based more on the brightness. So it doesn't necessarily know what coordinates it's looking at. So I couldn't just okay. type in 12P go um, during the eclipse. Unfortunately, I would have to kind of know where to point it. Um, but if you know where to point, it's definitely possible to see. Fantastic. Well, I am looking forward to seeing some photos as well. Um, I hope that your clouds <laughs> clear up a little bit and that maybe yeah. you can even kind of get a look at it. Um, it looks like your crowd is picking up. You're getting some more people in there. Yeah. So. Yeah. People are checking it out. <laughs> That's good. Fantastic. All right. Well, well, Ariel, we will be back with you in a, in a little over an hour. Um, hopefully okay. you get to see some totality from your location. In the yeah. meantime, we will continue to, uh, to see your view. Um, it's one of the, the ones we have coming in. So, uh, thank you so much for, for doing this, for setting up and, uh, and we will, um, we will talk to you uh, in a bit. Um, we are going to go snag Michael Prim now. So Ariel, Sweet. stay safe up there and have fun. Thank you. Yeah. See you later. See you later. See you later. All right. Uh, Michael, while whenever you're ready. <laughs> while we're switching to Mike, I will say just a note of caution. So uh, you might be tempted to take the solar filter off your telescope to look at the faint comet during the eclipse. Please do not do that because uh, it would be very, very risky. So keep that solar filter on during the day. Uh, if you really want to see the comet, look at it tonight. All right, and I am, I am, I'm bringing Michael in, and I think he's, he's a. Uh... Here we go. Hello, Michael. You are you are muted, so you'll have to unmute to say hi. 
<laughs> there we go. Is that better? Yeah, there we are. So, so how's it going? I I understand you're you're having some struggles. Well, here today. I mean, we've got a lot of clouds here. So, so, so the 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 game is to look for when there's a gap in the clouds. That's enough. You might you actually can kind of see. Yeah, you got my screen up there right now. So, um, let's see if uh, let's see if uh, fourth chime's a charm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think the the trick is we're getting these gaps, and the scope is trying to find it, and then some clouds come in and it's not clear enough and it, it decides it's not happy. So, <laughs> so anyhow, um, sticking with it here, trying to, try to, you know, trying to get what I can get and, uh, going to be doing, doing some shots with my, uh, my SLR also and, uh, seeing what we can do here. But, uh, I'm over at my brother's place. We're having a little, uh, a close party here. And, uh, so actually I think they've got the stream on in the other room right now. So, Oh, okay. But, so, so you're you're also in Austin, same as Frank, yeah. I'm, right? a, I'm in Austin. I'm in I'm in the northwest Austin, sort of over bar, toward. Actually, I'm actually in Cedar Park right now, which is just northwest and just a little north and west of Austin. So, uh, had about uh, ten or fifteen seconds more more totality time forecast than than my house, and uh, and a little further from the clouds. So we're kind of hoping we're still hoping to catch a break. I mean, you can see here we've actually got um, a. Uh, you know, pretty clear window right now. So that's, that's something I suppose, right? Yeah. <laughs> so well, what, which uh, telescope do you have? That, what one of you are you working the on here? One that is up here right now is the, is an Odyssey Pro. Okay. And uh, I've got also got my old, uh, my old EV1 trying to kind of trying to do its job too. Uh, I wanted to, I had wanted to go with this one because when I, I did the EV during the, uh, the last event for the annular eclipse and uh, unfortunately, the field of view is a little tighter, and uh, so the sun would hang a little bit off the top and bottom of the screen. And I know a lot of people were uh, were were asking about that. Oh, where do we go? Um, <laughs> anyhow, so <laughs> like I said, it, it's it's fighting a little bit to, to actually get a track. So, but um, sticking with it here. So, um, how everybody, how is everybody else doing as far as uh, you know weather? Anybody doing a little better than we are? Uh, it looks like, uh, Frank has had some clouds come in and out. Ariel's had some clouds come in and out, but, uh, I, I have Lauren's, uh, a view up as well. And, uh, hers looks pretty stable and pretty nice. So, um, what I can, I can bring that in so you can see, there you go. Excellent. Very yeah. good. So yeah, she's, that she's got, fun. she's got like no wind and, and, uh, no clouds. So hers is looking really good. And also, also hello to your brother, Greg. <laughs> oh, okay. <I'm> <laughs> Thanks for watching, Greg. Much appreciated. <laughs> so very nice. So, so, Mike, uh, so oh, go ahead. Uh, so Mike, you are uh, a very active citizen astronomer for Unistellar. Yes. Um, have you done an, uh, an exciting uh, science observation recently that, that oh. you are we're into. Yeah, well, I'm always well, I'm always trying to keep busy on these things. You uh, like Tom, I know you know uh, my 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 you know the my special place in my heart for exoplanet observations. I uh, uh, it's one of those things. Um, uh, what it's one of those things that as I was growing up, I've always been a, a huge fan of like Star Trek and and star science fiction in general. And the idea of growing up, the idea that sure there must be planets out there. You know, why wouldn't there be? To oh wow, somebody can actually see them. To Oh my God! I've actually published over a hundred observations of exoplanets that I've spotted in my backyard. Um, generally, why watching not Netflix or 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 something along those lines is is a little unreal. Let's put it that way. It's 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 a uh, it's been an amazing experience and uh, getting a chance to uh, work with professionals like yourselves um, in 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 doing uh, and actually contributing to the to the, to the science of it all is is remarkable honestly it, it, it i've learned a, a tremendous amount and it's uh in a lot of ways it's been it's sort of been a dream come true if you will like i said as a as, as a born and bred trekkie actually getting the chance to uh, uh explore strange new worlds is uh has been very true to me very close to my heart yeah well we we really appreciate it and uh really um get a great advantage from the, the citizen scientists, citizen astronomers around the world that participate mm -hmm. in our science campaigns um, for SETI and for Unistellar. And if 
you can visit science.unistellar.com uh, to learn more about how to participate in those programs. Mm -hmm. Don't have a lot of time. Right. Well, between to that and things like the, the cosmic cataclysms, getting into watching supernovas like the uh, the SN23, you know, 2023 IXF uh, campaign we did last year was just, it was remarkable. I mean, it was, and it was one of those things where I think we, as a group, it really showed our strength in the sense that it's not about having million dollar scopes when it can be about having hundreds or even thousands of observations all, you know, ganging up to, to, to well, do things that even the best telescope on the ground can't do, which is look at something 24 hours a day. You know, we can do that. You know, we've done that on, a, on multiple occasions at this point yep. with people here and in Europe and in Japan and, you know, Australia, New Zealand, on and on. It's, it's, uh, there's a, there's a power to that that is hard to match uh, with, yep. a, with a single high quality instrument. Definitely, yeah, the sky belongs to everyone. Uh, yes. So it's nice to be able to cooperate, kind of like we're doing today. We have views from all over the place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and obviously, you know, Mike, thank you so much for for participating in the the citizen science program and the the Unistellar community. So we we oh. couldn't do a lot of these things without these without you and everyone else who oh, worked it's... so hard on these. It's it's been it's been so enriching. I mean, the way I the way I tell some of my uh, my astronomer, you know, my observational astronomer bodies, like folks at the uh, uh, the local uh, you know Austin Astronomical Society and so forth, is it's great getting a chance to look through the scope and see things. It's great taking pictures, but it changes it from kind of a, a pursuit into a mission to to get involved with actually contributing you know contributing data that winds up. I mean. It, I, I, it was remarkable, for instance, the first time I got to be listed as a co-author on an actual peer-reviewed scientific, you know, for you PhD types, this is this is a thing. For I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a career computer engineer. I've never written a scientific paper, and I've now had the chance to be, you know, the honor of being listed as a co-author on eight papers over the last two years. It's been, uh, it's remarkable. It's like I said, it adds a lot, it adds a lot to my life, and I, I get a lot out of it. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And we will be checking back in with you uh, on and off. Uh -huh, and uh, so um, thank you for, for setting up your telescopes. And uh, we will talk to you a bit later. Okay, talk to you later. All right. I, I was just sent this GIF and I'm going to share it with people. This is pretty neat. So one of our scientists sent this to show where we're at kind of right now. So you can see the moon shadow coming in there. And that's that umbra that Frank was talking about. And uh, so this is pretty neat. So um, thank you to Peter Yeniskins for sharing that with us. And uh, yeah, all Very right, good. let's, Lauren, are you ready to come on? You wanna, wanna say hi to people? Yeah. Here we go. There we are, hello, hi. Lauren. Hi everyone, happy total solar eclipse. Happy total solar eclipse. So, so you got all your, you got all your uh, uh, aliens around you? <laughs> yes, we have a lot of gear. Can y'all hear me okay? Is that all right? Yeah, you're fine. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes, we have several aliens. Unfortunately, because our weather is so great, it's really warm and some of them have blown up. <laughs> so, oh, no. So, <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, I have the Odyssey behind me equipped with this smart solar filter and we have great weather here. It's a little bit windy just in gusts, but the weather is looking fantastic. We're going to have a great view of, fo of, of totality. Of totality. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're in Greenbrier, Arkansas. I'm with my family and uh, we're at a place called the Hilltop RV Resort. So there's going to be a bunch of people behind me cooking out and uh, it's going to be a really awesome time. So uh, when did when did you get there? Um, it seems like ages ago. <laughs> However, <laughs> it was only Saturday night, I think. Yeah. And I'm I'm really stoked because last I saw the solar eclipse in 2017 because it passed over Georgia where I live, um, but I didn't really get very close to the center of the path. So totality was really short. And here it's going to be about three minutes and 56 seconds. So I'm really excited to see what the environment does and what the animals and you know bugs do and how they react. And uh, who are you with? Y'all want they're they're just off screen. Do you want to come say hi? Come on. It's my whole family. Uh, hello, family. <laughs> hello. Hello, Lauren's family. Oh, they've got the t-shirts and everything. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So we're all super excited to see uh, to see the eclipse and enjoy it together. And the the alien balloons were their idea, so I can't really take much credit for it, honestly. <laughs> they just had them laying around. They were already yeah. they already had them. Just materialized them out of thin air. <laughs> Very cool. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Well, Lauren, thank you. Lauren has been uh, alongside me and Frank and a bunch of people behind the scenes, Rebecca, Hasmeen, uh, Lee, all of our, our team. Lauren has really been the, the, the general of our troops. So um, thank you so much, Lauren, for coordinating so many people and so many things and making this go along uh, so far really, really easily. We've been on, on for an hour and it's, it, you know, we're, we're doing pretty well here. So um, I'm when you're having fun. By the it, way. it really does. And, you know, so thank you so much for coordinating so much of this and, and for, you know, getting a Starlink up and running and all of that. So, yeah. And our, I'm sorry, there's people running around because it's a fantastic day, but uh, I've got, it almost looks like we're getting a quarter of the way um, into covering the sun. So we've been looking at it through the telescope and also through eclipse glasses and uh, I'm really glad to be here. This is fantastic. And we've had so many people participate. Beth, Tom, you've been amazing. So just clear skies for everyone, like continued clear skies. Yeah, so absolutely. Sure. So mm -hmm. so thank you so much, Lauren. And we will be back with you as you get closer uh, to totality yeah. uh, in about, about 45 minutes. So um, okay. en enjoy. And uh, we'll, we'll be presenting uh, your view on and off. So thank you for being here. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. See you later. Bye. See you later. All right. We are going to bring in Stefan, who is in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hello, Stefan. Uh, you're muted. You're going to need to unmute. <laughs> All right. Can you hear there me we now? go. Hello. Can now, let's yes. see. I'm going to I'm going to pull up your view because you're giving us a nice view here, too. Um, so um, I, I have the perfect weather here. Um, it's clear. No wind. Um, still waiting for the moon. But, uh, yeah, you're a little little further <laughs> along the path, so you haven't quite gotten there yet. Exactly. Uh, so, so what's where you're in Raleigh, North Carolina? Who are you with? And and what telescope? I'm are you just using? at my in my backyard. Um, took a break from work, and uh, told some of my colleagues to tune in. So, if you're listening, hi. <laughs> Um, Hello to, to Stefan's colleagues. Hope you are watching. <laughs> and uh, what, what telescope have you got set up? I have an EV1 um, as my quest. Oh, hey, I can see the moon like in the bottom right. Actually. There it is. Oh, yeah, it's just coming to, in. It's starting timing. to creep in. There we go. Exciting. Um, yeah, I have an EV scope one. It's like the first version um, actually invested in the original Kickstarter campaign. Um, and as, yeah, as Mike mentioned, uh, you can. It doesn't show the full disk, um, so. But uh, I love it. Just been using it a ton. Um, yeah, another very active, uh, another very active citizen scientist for us. So yeah. We appreciate yeah, you getting yeah, your data yeah. all the time. Um, this is a really nice view still. Even you know, we lose a little bit of the sun at the top, but um, can really see that so those sunspots just as clear as the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, just been getting so much out of it and, uh, you know, been contributing data to papers and, you know, been cited on, um, you know, scientific um, publications. So it's, yeah, it's just great because I'm, I'm a huge nerd. So <laughs> I love this stuff. I think we might all be. <laughs> it might yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. Same, same if you're watching, you might have a little bit of nerd in you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's true. Yeah. Just, so, um, Stefan, what what is your eclipse experience? What, what have you seen I, uh, totality before? I have, yeah. Last time was in uh, twenty seventeen. Um, we went to uh, Charleston, and uh, it was yeah, it was pretty amazing. We were just at uh, we were gonna stay on a campground, but it was so hot that we ended up going to a hotel, and we were at the pool, and <laughs> and it was cloudy, and then just in time the clouds parted and you could see the totality. So it was, yeah, it was just great. Um, so, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, is, 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 has anybody at your house with you or is it just you right now? It's, uh, yeah, my wife's sort of around. 
Um, <laughs> probably gonna get her. Like now that we can actually see something. <laughs> That's right. That yeah. yeah. A... Call, call me when something exciting happens. That's usually <laughs> the way. It goes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Have some, uh, you know, eclipse glasses. Um, so fully <laughs> Eclipse glasses, um, no clouds, and 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 an EV one, and that that disc of the moon just starting to creep in there. So that's really exactly, neat. Exactly, exactly. This was this was great timing. <laughs> Lauren Lauren, um, Lauren knows how to read these maps really well, and she she knows how to time it. So you know, good yeah. on her. For, for I was figuring like, out. I was like, I'm I was a little worried there for a second, like, <laughs> uh, but yeah. That well, is, fantastic. Awesome. So, so Stefan, uh, what what do you have? What have you worked on, citizen science wise, for Unistellar so far? Um, a lot of things. Um, I've doing been doing some exoplanet stuff. Although I, I have too many trees, uh, they get, keep getting in the way. Um, I've done some comet obs observations. Um, like uh, I uh, observed um, the. Uh, uh, the recent impact of uh, Didymos, or, or rather, the uh, you know asteroid mm -hmm. um, before its impact. Um, so that was that was exciting. Like I love the things that are happening like in the moment. Um, so so recent the one is there's a there's a star that's uh, a, uh, a nova that's about to um, you know it's predicted to flare up. Um, and so we're, we've just been constantly watching it and to see if we can, you know, catch it in the moment. Um, so that's exciting. Um, just lots of things. Like I got a, uh, a, uh, occultation by, uh, like another type of eclipse really, uh, mm -hmm. where an asteroid actually moves in front of a star and temporarily blinks it out. Um, so, so that those are really hard to get, hard to catch because they're just you have to get the timing really right. Um, and uh, I got one of those the other day, so it's yeah, lots Very of nice. congratulations. That's really yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That um, I'll just say because that's the program I'm leading right now with the watching yeah. for that Nova explosion. Um, that's a cool one. So that star is named T Corona Borealis, uh, and it's a it's a star that. Uh, erupts in an explosion every 80 years or so. And just based on watching it over the last few centuries, um, we know that another eruption should be coming up soon. So we've been watching it since July. Almost every night we've got an observation uh, waiting for it to go off. And so we want to just be there waiting and watching as soon as that star starts to brighten. And it'll be bright enough to see with the naked eye when it goes off. It will be one of the brightest stars in the sky once that happens. So that's a very exciting yeah. uh, campaign that we're running right now. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, yeah, that, that is, that is true. Um, it's a true, true Nova, <laughs> true new star, right? Like mm -hmm. um, where the name comes Literally. from. So, yep. um, yeah. Well, well, that's so, exciting. So, uh, Tom, should they, if, if, if people are interested in, in, uh, observing that they should, uh, how did they get involved? Um, yeah, you can either download the Unistellar app um, and go to the, the uh, Cosmic Cataclysms mode and, and look for, I think it's the Find Latest Alerts or um, something like that. Or um, you can just go to science.unistellar.com and check out our Cosmic Cataclysms program inside of there. That's, uh, that's where you'll learn all about that. Fantastic. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy your yeah, what seems to be me. a very lovely day and a lovely view. And uh, and have your have your wife come take a look now because I will do interesting to see. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. You have a fabulous um, rest of your partial uh, solar eclipse. Thank you. You too. I'm I'm looking forward to totality on the screen on my screen. <laughs> Enjoy. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. So um, I was hoping to have Pascal, but Pascal has has not pinged in yet. I know he's had some uh, connection issues um, and may just honestly be distracted. I have heard 
let me see if if I have yes okay I have been given I have been given this again so I've got another update oh there's Pascal but let me let me present this really quickly um, I have been given another update here for where the eclipse is and uh, it's just starting to hit Mazatlan Mexico so uh, we're we're getting there. All right. So the totality is approaching. Yep. So some people are going to start to see some some really amazing uh, uh, totality views in, in Mexico. So uh, stay tuned down there and we will be bringing some totality to you here. And uh, now I'm going to bring in Pascal Lee. So hold on one moment here. Hello, Pascal. Hi, Beth. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hello. Good. How are you? Where are you at? We are in Hunt, Texas. If there was a place called Nowhere, that this would be the middle of it. <laughs> uh, I'm with uh, Rave Meta, who is actually on the advisory council of the SETI Institute. And uh, we're having a, a blast at this location. Uh, it's, uh, we're on a hilltop. I'm going to do a quick pan, slowly, at a private property. Uh, this is the beautiful uh, valley out there, wide open skies. But as you can tell, it's uh, pretty cloudy. No, no, no. That's even harder. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty cloudy. Wow. It so... Has, we've had, so we're still hopeful that right at the right time we'll have a, a break. And you can see that behind us there are some... Uh, Telescopes that are set up, high resolution cameras, some real pro equipment, and then on top of the hill here, uh, lots of people gathered together. So we're having a good time. Well, that's that's really good. So uh, this is this you're at an event, correct? You're at an Eclipse Fest. So this this is Eclipse Fest. This is called Cosmic Eclipse. It's organized by Loretta Hidalgo Whitesides and her team. Uh, we're having a fantastic time. If I can catch her, I will bring her to to the uh, microphone here. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice gathering of people. There's there's Frank White, who's the author of the Overview Effect, very well known uh, cosmic perspective of of our world over there. Uh, just a, a really nice group of people. Astronaut how many how well. many people do you think you have there? I think we're about a hundred. Yeah. Maybe even more, maybe close to 150. Yeah. Wow. It's a party. Even if it's cloudy, it's a party. Yeah. So let me show you our sky. This is looking up now. And uh, while we wait for this to clear out, maybe Meta, you can, you're, sorry, uh, Rave, you can say a few things. Yeah. This is a special place. Um, you know, different, depending on where you're in Texas. You know, weather warnings and storms and potential tornadoes. And we're lucky that we only have clouds to deal with. So, so we see the sun kind of, in the, you know, peak out every couple minutes. So we get these these uh, ephemeral glimpses, glimpses of the moon, you know, moving into the sun. So it's pretty, really beautiful. There you have it. So I'm not sure we have more to report. I mean, unless you have some questions on other things. I was going to say, you know, one thing that uh, really fascinates me when we look at these eclipses is to think of how these eclipses have changed over time as viewed from Earth. Uh, okay. What's up with that? Either either someone won the lottery or maybe the sun came out a little bit. Okay, well, there was a break in the clouds and everybody got excited. So eight seconds. Eight seconds. We hope that, that's, that's excitement right there. We hope that during the four and a half minutes of the totality, we will have a few a few glimpses of the actual totality ourselves yeah so i was saying you know one thing that's really fascinating to me is is how eclipses have evolved uh, as seen from earth over time uh, the moon as you probably know is the result of a giant co collision between a mars-sized object and proto-earth the earth at the time was maybe 80 percent of its of its final size and that that object that collided with the Earth dumped a big chunk of itself into the Earth, but also tore out into space some of Earth's crust, its mantle, 
we were then surrounded by a giant ring of debris for a while, which then reaccreted and coalesced into the moon. There might have been a few later additions to that. Uh, that's where some uncertainty still lies. But at very at the very beginning there, right after this giant impact in the formation of the moon, the moon was much closer. It was about 16 times uh, wider across our sky than it is today. It was a gigantic blob. And you would have eclipses all the time. Not only that, but the the duration of the day at the time was only four to five hours on Earth. And so eclipses were very common. And then as the moon quickly receded to its current location, they've become rare and rarer. And we are just at that point in time in, in the history of the Earth when the moon actually matches the apparent size of the sun. But that's really a co complete coincidence. And uh, in a few billion years, as the moon continues to move out, the moon will appear smaller and smaller. And from that point on, we will no longer have total solar eclipses, only annular eclipses at best. So from, from the standpoint of the history of Earth, uh, these are some of the last total eclipses that we get to see from our planet. Yeah, oh, super cool. I, that's a really good reminder that uh, things actually do change in the universe and in the solar system over time. And sometimes we just get lucky about what we do see. But maybe sometime in the near future, we'll be seeing eclipses from other planets. Yeah, beautiful images. Really so well, I'm thanks. getting a few comments on chat. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to look at those. Thanks. Where's Ryan? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. That's not for uh, me. <laughs> so, uh, Pascal, your work is primarily uh, Beth, on... I don't hear you anymore. Oh, you... I, I hear you, Beth. I think that's Beth, Pascal. Can you, you hear me? I can hear I can hear Tom. I can hear Pascal. Yeah. No sound, no sound. We may have, he may have just lost our audio. He may have just lost our audio. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But anyway, uh, I don't I don't hear you guys anymore. Oh, you're in the show. Everyone can see and hear you. Okay, fine. Yeah, so so the moon in the past is sort of really fascinating. And of course, I work a lot on Mars as well. And Mars does have eclipses of the sun as well, since Mars has two little moons. But they're much smaller than our moon. And although they're much closer to Mars than our moon is to the Earth, uh, they're so small that they never completely cover the disk of the sun. So if you were on Mars looking at uh, these moons, every now and then you would see that they pass in front of the disk of the sun. But these would be annular eclipses, so to speak, in the sense that the the profile of the moon would not completely cover the disk of the sun, even as seen from Mars. Um, and so eclipses, the way they are total like this on the Earth, with a perfect match almost between the disk of the moon and the disk of the sun, that is really a, an exceptional thing, not just in space, but in, in time as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you hear us now, Pascal? No. Nope. Yeah, so more of our Maybe. sky. Yeah, it's not looking great, but we're still having a good time. Well, that's that's what counts. I know you can't hear us, but uh, all right. I think I think the best part still... of all this, of course, are our SETI Institute uh, glasses. Do you see these? Nice. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. I don't know if you hear the the clamor there, but that's that's a break in the clouds. Okay, guys. On to the next person. Good. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, Pascal. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah, bye. You can't hear us, but we'll say goodbye anyway. We'll say goodbye anyway. So we're still looking at uh, Ariel's view in, in Dallas. Um, uh, I'm going to switch real quickly to, to Lauren, and then we're going to bring in... Uh, who do we have next? It's uh, um, Amori. There we are. Hello. You're muted. You're going to have to... <laughs> Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello. Oh. Hi. So, so where are you at? 
So right now I'm on the Brock University campus. It's in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Uh, as you can see behind me, oops, that way, yeah, very cloudy here. We do not have a view of the sun, but that's okay. A lot of people are coming in and enjoying the, the party, I guess. So how did you how did you end up at, at Brooks University? What's going on there? Uh, I was looking at location to go uh, in Ontario, Canada. And I came across uh, the chairs of physics at uh, Brooks University and we exchanged and they, they actually ordered the Niviscope to see the live eclipse before I even contacted them. And they said they, they would be delighted to have the city live here on campus. And so, yeah, that's how I came to the campus. And, and you're there, you have an EV scope with you? Yes, uh, you can maybe see it right there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, an EV scope too. An EV scope too, okay. So you have a two and uh, are, are you, you haven't been able to see anything obviously because it's just no. clouds for you. Every time there is a tiny, tiny little spot to see the sun, we try to get to it, but no success <laughs> so far. So, so it's going about as well for you as it was for Pascal. There were, he was having some cheering every time mm. people would, would get a break <laughs> yeah it's kind of the same yes i'm gonna i'm gonna switch back to ariel her view is really clearing up here yeah. i um, wish we had is. the same view and she's <laughs> yeah. pushing her way towards totality wow it is looking really good so yeah, so we... what's what's your experience of what do you do with unistellar uh so i joined city unistellar two years ago as an intern right and I came back six months ago to be a research assistant at the City Institute. And so uh, on day to day, uh, I work with Tom on transient events, um, uh, scientific side with the Unistellar network. Yeah. Yep. So I'm already was one of our one of our researchers on that cosmic cataclysms program that I mentioned before. So he has been responsible for helping us plan and kind of catch these super energetic explosions. This is the most energetic things in the universe that we watch for, and you never know when they're going to happen. So he's been part of that team to, to build this program that will catch them as soon as possible and be the first to get uh, these really energetic explosive events. And hopefully your weather clears up soon. Uh, I don't know uh, if the yeah, forecast yeah. to get any better. The the forecast is not looking that good, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh no! Well, I mean, you've got about an hour, maybe. Maybe. Yes, yeah, about uh, it's about an hour till totality right now. Uh, we still get uh, the complete dark, which will be cool, but we will not see the sun itself. Hmm. That's that's well, a good point, actually. Even if it's cloudy, it will get darker. I assume. Even if you can't see that shadow coming. Yeah, and we have actually, uh, there are cool experiments on campus. Uh, for instance, there is one behind me that will kind of see the impact of uh, the sun going dark for a few minutes on plants. Uh, they have a special plants that just close up when it's completely dark. And so they are trying to mimic that. Oh, that's very cool. That um, is. I'm. I'm hearing a few comments. I'm reading a few comments here. Uh, David Ken Kensinski. Sorry, I said that wrong. Said Bazitlan was totally awesome, and uh, that there was a uh, prominence uh, visible at about five o'clock on the sun. So that's really neat. So Mazatlan apparently had a really good view, and uh, so congrats on that. And uh, Ariel's view is still looking great here. Yeah. So, so something to look for. Sorry, I was just going to say that that prominence is something to look for. That's going to be a little like a tendril of, of sun material that's coming off the surface of the sun. It looks like up in or kind of uh, down into the right, maybe at five o'clock uh, when that shadow is complete. It's definitely something to watch for. Definitely. So, so Amari, we will check back with you closer to totality. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and we will keep our fingers crossed that that something yeah. something good happens. But if nothing else, we'll get to see it get dark for you. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. All right, great. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, enjoy the crowd. At least I know you've got yeah. you've got company. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Amari. Thank you so much.
All right. Uh, next up, we have Ian Weaver, who is in Dayton, Ohio. Um, he's just coming. I think he's he's off camera at the moment. I will switch to his view, though, because he does have his view going. And uh, so he's got a nice, clear sky uh, when he comes back in. Why does why does Ariel's view show Tuesday, January 9th in the top left corner? You know, some of us are having trouble with our apps uh, giving us dates that are useful. Um, I know Lauren's uh, phone does not want to pick the correct time and it's like wrong on so many ways. So it's it's impressive. I can, uh, that can actually also be a it's a weird feature. It's not the phone or the telescope. It's when you share it through your computer. Sometimes that will happen. Um, I don't know why. It's it's a weird thing of phone talking to computer. Uh, it's just sometimes the way it is. Yeah, it looks like looks like Ian's at some kind of an event. I'm just gonna pop it up so people can kind of see. So yeah, he's at an event in in Dayton. Um, you see people talk, pointing at the camera. We're pointing, <laughs> and they're on camera. Can Ian right. hear us? I don't. I don't think so. I'm going to switch to to Daniel, who is in Vallejo and who is ready. And uh, maybe when Ian comes back, we can grab him. We are currently looking at uh, at uh, Daniel or at Ian's view, at least. Hello, Daniel. Oh, hey Beth, how's it going? Uh, da Daniel, Daniel, you're no, you're not looking at the camera, hun. Oh, I forgot to take my glasses off. Whoops. Hey, yeah, how's it going? Glasses off. There you go. Good. How are you doing? Good. We have a partial eclipse here. We got my school here, Griffin Academy High School in Vallejo. Um, so I'll get my screen ready and then I'll show you some of my students too. All right. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we're seeing here in uh, Vallejo. And I think uh, just about. Uh, uh, 1115 or 1114 we had uh, the maximum coverage it was like 33 percent of the area of the sun uh, or 44 percent of the diameter was covered but still pretty amazing to see a lot of oohs and ahs even though we have a partial very nice how many students do you have there with you uh yeah so we have uh just about 300 students so i'm gonna pick my camera up so we can see so wave hi everybody wave hi so they're all over campus, kind of outside the rooms. People are looking up. Some people are coming to the telescope and taking a look. <laughs> yeah, look, just be careful you don't you don't uh, bump it. Kids are asking to look through the telescope. <laughs> so, cool. uh, Danny, which telescope do you have back there? It's an EV scope two. Okay, so also running yeah. on the two. Yeah, we have. And so, a so at this point, you're just. Guys. You're watching the moon move off now. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, we have students doing activities too. Um, there's a really cool activity educators can do with a, a meter stick. And you get like a, an inch uh, sphere on, a, on like a toothpick and then a quarter inch uh, sphere on the other end. And when you line it up, you get that uh, syzygetic lineup, right? Or syzygy you can actually create the shadow of the moon on this. So this is a way that we can use a modeling instruction of pedagogy of inquiry so that students can learn about how eclipses happen. Nice, and that, that really kind of drives it home a little more, I imagine, than just reading about it in a textbook. Yeah, exactly. Do you have an idea, Daniel, how many students that are there, how many of this is their first time seeing an eclipse or, or even really thinking about one? Um, I think probably most of them have uh, probably not seen an eclipse before. I know some of them, some of my astronomy students saw the annular eclipse in October, but I think this is a new experience for most of them. I don't really have an exact number though. Well, several of your, several of your uh, students are saying hi to you on YouTube. So uh, Monica and Veronica are both saying hi. So from oh, your cool. Those Valley are class. Yeah, so I also teach at Napa Valley College, and I uh, told them to tune in. So, hi, Monica and Veronica, thanks for tuning in. That's awesome that you came. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, we, so Daniel, we will let you get back to enjoying it. It looks like uh, 
I think I think Ian is back in place, and so we're gonna we're gonna jump to Ian. You continue to have a lovely afternoon. It looks like it is beautiful out there. It, it is definitely beautiful here, but I didn't really notice any changes on the on the leaves. So awesome. Well, thanks for having me. Clear skies, everybody. Good luck. Thanks, Dan. All right. And let's find Ian. Where's Ian? There's Ian, and here's Ian's view. Ian, come talk to us. Ian, talk to us. Ian, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe having some connection issues. Uh, well, may Maybe, yeah. It, it's definitely he's he's got a lot of people around him. It seems so. Um, while we see if we can get him back, I'm just going to say hi to some more people because, oh my gosh, um, let's see, uh, where did I, where did I leave off? There's so many. All right. Um, lots of people still coming in from Texas. I've got the Caribbean, Italy, Brazil, uh, Ecuador, uh, the Azores. Wow. I think the Azores. Oh, um, that's on my, that's on my bucket list. Um, let's see what else have we got. Florida. You have not missed things. Uh, Scotland, Nevada. Wow. Um, I also saw Bella is at the SETI Institute. Hello, Bella. Hello, Ian. <laughs> howdy, howdy, all. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Welcome in. And uh, also, let's see, we've got Greece, uh, the UK, some more people from the UK. Um, and I know that uh, our our associate Simon Steele is watching from Pennsylvania, so it, everybody is is back and back and back. So yay! All right, Ian, welcome oh. in. Hi. <laughs> where where you're in Dayton, Ohio, but you you appear we're to be in at some kind of yes, we are. You you appear to be at a festival. Where yes, where sorry, are you? What's going a on? Bit, a little bit of a crowd here. <laughs> Say hi to people. Howdy. Wow, busy. Hey, great. Glad to be here. How's everybody doing? Good. So how's how's your event going? What what event are you at? I go right to the center. Yes, we are. We are at uh, Aviation Heritage National Park here. Uh, this is like the hometown of the Wright brothers. of a famous poet Dunbar. So we're surrounded by amazing history here and amazing people. Oh, I'm sorry, you say that one more time? Excellent. We no, we, we got you. Yeah. Hey, sorry, is my audio coming through okay? Yeah. It's 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 noisy. Like we hear a lot of the people behind you, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, got you. Yes, yeah, we have a little bit of a delay here, so sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. Um yeah, it, it seems like there is a bit of a delay. Go ahead, Beth. Okay, is that a little bit better? Yeah. So, so Ian, uh, is this is this your first eclipse, or how many? What what kind of view have you had before now? Oh yeah, this is my first uh, total eclipse. Excited to be here. Um. So it looks like uh, there is a big group of people that uh, around. Have you gotten a feeling for how many people See this is their first eclipse? Yeah, so we are right by the date in like the actual city center. Uh, I think we have like a few thousand people coming through over the entire event, it looks like. Trying to get a better view here for people. <laughs> Everywhere away. <laughs> nice. It seems like all, all ages are, are represented there. Oh, it's a good turnout. <laughs> We're having a good time. And see if I can turn this to here. This is you guys. Nice. Um, so I'm getting reports from. But yeah, the getting reports from Texas. Well here. Sorry, Ian. Uh, it seems we're getting pretty close to totality. Yeah. Um, do we want to switch back to Frank? Beth, you're muted. Right. Beth, you're muted if you're speaking. So I turn out my sound a little bit here. Nope, All sorry. Right. All right. Uh, Ian, we're going to switch to Frank. We will be back with you a bit closer okay. to your totality in about half an hour. We'll invest in the chair next time. All right. We'll see you in a bit. All right. Good seeing you all. Thanks for coming through. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frank. Wow, Frank. Can you hear us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. is. We can barely see far. you though. I don't. I don't have yeah. a view of your your telescope though. Well, it's getting super dark. So you here you're experiencing the 
the totality is happening in three in five minutes but even though it's in five minutes you we barely see already on people all right good i am adjusting my screen i'm gonna turn off my screen during the totality so we enjoy it fully so from time to time through the clouds we see the, the sun or the crescent of sun and uh and the color is changing now like you can have these uh, eerie feelings i don't know something weird is not natural and i don't know if you see behind me but everybody is uh behind me waiting for for the moment and uh yeah, if our so calculation this, the... All right. The, the view I'm happen. sharing right now is uh, from Ariel's rooftop in Dallas, and you can see how much of the sun is covered up there. Uh, from, right, wow, so it is so dark. Get if you switch to my to my screen, I'm showing an app right now, and we have four minute and nineteen seconds. This is the app made by I know uh, Eclipse. I forgot the name, the exact name. It's extreme, it has been extremely useful for everybody here to know when it's going to happen and how long it's going to last. So, yeah. And we can start like, it's getting cold, colder, definitely. And, uh, and people are quiet, so I may be quiet too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Everybody's quiet. It's pretty cool. Uh, now we see the sun through the clouds. Yeah, it's very, very small. It's a tiny crescent right now. And despite that, this is basically the same kind of color you have when you observe uh, an annular eclipse. It's more or less the same, uh, the same feelings, the temperature, the drop in temperature, and the color. Uh, it's going to happen. Wow. Three minutes. Uh, Three minutes. Uh, it is amazing how so. much darker it looks compared to when we talked to you yeah. earlier. So there is kids. They experienced the so oh my god eh? <laughs> look even if i've done that multiple times this is still something a, a very weird feeling we have a dog here let's see what the what the dog's gonna do yeah <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed is it, are the birds doing anything strange they're super quiet suddenly hmm. interesting the kids are screaming ah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a human reaction and an expecting one. All right. And then so when it, once it totality starts, it will be something like four minutes, you said? Uh, this one's going to last, uh, uh, let's see, one minute and 20 seconds for us. Okay. Shorter for okay. you. We are, okay. we are on the side, so you see? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anu, for doing this app, by the way. That's a very convenient app. It's gonna be my new app for for Eclipse. No, <laughs> okay. Two minutes. I make announcement too. I, I bought a megaphone, but I'm. I think they're quite enough now. And once again, here's here's uh, Ariel's view. Ah, it's getting Do you so see close. us still? Because I don't see any. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're you're basically just a shadow now, Frog. Yeah, it's okay. it's getting very adjust. dark for you. Uh, let's see if I can get the camera to be adjusted. Guys, can you adjust slightly the camera because we're already in the dark? We're already almost. Can you show us the screen? Now, my uh, the the view, please. So I'm I don't. Gonna... I don't have my your view. view. I just have the app. No, we have my view when I speak. Ah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Because what I would like is to kind of boost slightly the balance so we can see the full obscurity. One minute. Can you just slightly adjust that? I tell you, I will tell you. All right. It's it is so and, dark uh, front. Now it's getting super dark. <laughs> wow. We can still see here. I mean, you're 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 just like I can see a faint outline of you, and that's it. And now it's getting crazily, crazy, crazy dark. Yeah. There we go. We can see a little better now, but I expect you to. to yeah, go away. you can see me still. Hi. Right. Twenty seconds. Twenty-one. And we can see the 
the, the sun on the top of that. It's amazing. We can see a tiny. Oh, my God. This is beautiful. We just saw the last part. <laughs> oh, wow. The crowd seems excited. Oh, it's and the fun. crowd goes wild. Here we are. <laughs> now we are in the totality, guys. It's amazing. It's beautiful. The lights in the sense the sensor light turn on <laughs> in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the app that, that Frank was showing earlier is called Eclipse Live. So if you wanna if you wanna snag it. Uh, if you are in the path of totality and you want to see, you know, or anywhere really and see like what percentage you're going to get when it's going to happen, that app will tell you all of these things. I'm going to, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to uh, make Frank sort of a solo view here so that people hey, it's can popping live. up again. Beautiful. Oh, we can see the, the, um, the Corona. That's amazing. Beautiful. When the sun is active, it's, it's seriously something like, yeah. So uh, reports from Mexico said there was a prominence at about five o'clock on the sun. Yeah, exactly. We see it. You see the protuberance at five o'clock? Yeah, that's I'm don't even take a picture. I'm not even taking a picture. And here we are. It's the end. We can start seeing the sun again. The solar eclipse has now ending, but it's, it's getting cold. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. You can, actually, you can actually feel the difference. That is wild. I feel like you can actually actually starting to brighten up a little bit now on camera. Yeah, uh, we're starting to yeah. see you a bit more. Yeah, now you can see me. Now you can, we can start seeing people again. There is a baby crawling around, so I was not moving. It's good, it's good. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> he saw his first eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, people. There are people. And we're back. So, yeah, we will, it will come back. Don't worry, guys. If you're on totality, yeah, you will, you will get the view back. <laughs> and and once again, this is, this is Ariel's view from Dallas, Texas. She is moments away from totality herself. Okay. You can switch to, to her whenever you want. But uh, yeah, that was a great eclipse, total eclipse to do it, to witness with you guys. Seriously, that's amazing. Yeah, no, that was oh. incredible, Frank. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for, for coordinating a lot of this and making this happen. Uh, everybody's yeah, now, smiling again. Good. And, They're not worried yeah. anymore. <laughs> And now you're now you're in the light. Like it's 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 such a drastic change. I see. How was that? That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> they like it, and they, they want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. <laughs> encore. Encore. Wow! Amazing. Oh. And now, yeah, we can finally see the crescent again through the clouds. But you see, even if you don't have a clear sky, being on the path of totality make a huge difference. I mean, you experience it, the darkness. Oh. Uh, Ariel's is about to go away completely. Go ahead. Go ahead to, the, to, to Ariel whenever you want. Thank you very much. Bye. See you later. Thank okay. You, Frank. We'll talk to you later. Ariel. Ariel, what's going on? Look at that. Hi. Yeah. It's just about to start here. We have a cloud, but I think it'll pass during totality. It's not that big. We have a clear patch coming. You could hear people like screaming. <laughs> I mean, your view your view shows that it's, it's, oh, there's like a tiny, tiny sliver and not much left. Yeah. We go into it in like 30 seconds, I think. Okay. I think about. And how, is it about four minutes for you there? Yeah, it, I think just under four. Okay. Oh, it's getting dark. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah, you can't really see much on my screen, but it's happening. Don't, don't. Right now, all we see is a black screen, and that's what yeah. we wanted to see. So yeah. I'm, I, I am content. <laughs> Can you hear other people? Oh yeah, no, we we hear the crowd. It, that is amazing. 
good. We're looking at it through a thin cloud right now. So oh, there may be see, there may you can see some action. Yeah, there may be a prominence <laughs> around five o'clock. Oh, around that, five o'clock. Yeah. Around five o'clock, there's some like more of a prominence going oh, on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. And that's something that's that'll be tough to see, and that's really the telescope with the solar filter on yeah, won't really gonna... see that. It's probably too dark. Yeah. yeah. Audiences, but well, we can gonna, watch on the I'm gonna, screen. I'm going to take the the view down and just show sure. you and all your all the people, so everyone can see how dark it is there. Yeah, it's so weird. So what what are you experiencing? What is it? Is it cooler? Is it? Are you hearing different noises? What have you got going on? It's definitely cooler. Um, there were some birds that freaked out for a second right when it started. But yeah, right now the cloud is moving away, so we're about to see a lot more structure. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Is that a planet over there? I think, I think yeah. It, it should be Jupiter and Venus, I think. Okay. So you can look up without your glasses. Uh, so you can see the planets. There, there should be four up there. Uh, yeah. Five, actually. Right. I see two, though, clearly. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can really yeah, I've, see I've, I've heard from other people watching that there were two really easily view viewable. Yeah. We're seeing um, like streaks that are more than just the five o'clock, but I don't know, all around, there's a lot. The sun is an active place, I'm not too surprised. I do think I see the prominence that you were talking about. If you look like really close to the edge, there's like, it's like a tiny bright spot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So cool. I imagine uh Plasma, yeah. I imagine that's probably Jupiter and Venus that you're seeing since they'll yeah. be the brightest up there. Yeah, so I think, yeah, we're seeing Jupiter and Venus. Any sign of that comet? I'm looking, I don't see it. No I don't think it's quite dark enough for me here. That's okay. Uh, yeah, I've read somewhere, someone was advising, you can look for the comet for about two seconds and if you don't see it, yeah, just enjoy give up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you gotta look at the sun, it's so cool. Oh yeah. Definitely, definitely a little jealous that I'm not there for this part. Yeah, I know you should be. <laughs> I, I have someone of someone saying that they don't see the eclipse on screen. I'm gonna I'm just gonna add your telescope and show them yeah. what they see, which is nothing. It's it's nothing. Like unfortunately, with a solar filter, once the sun is gone, you you see nothing. There's no light. Yeah. It was blocking out everything and now it's now the yeah, uh, Ariel, can you can you give a glimpse of the the crowd around you? Oh yeah, let me see if I can do that without knocking things over. Let's see, let's see. I'm, okay. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got quite a party up there. There's some people over here. <laughs> yeah, I, I would definitely say you are you are over thirty people now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely are now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's starting to peek back through. You can see on my uh, telescope view now. It's starting to peek back. Oh, yep. There it comes back. It's coming back. So solar solar eclipse glasses back on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people definitely want the sun to come back eventually. We we don't eventually. want it to stay away. Yeah. It was cool. All right, well, uh, okay. No, no, no. Tell, what, what's your impression? I, All right. I was just going to share um, they, the class that came here. They brought an obsidian rock uh, because that's how they used to view the sun and the eclipse uh, in ancient times in the Aztec culture. And so we were looking through an obsidian rock instead of our glasses earlier, and it was really awesome. It gives you a, a similar effect. But So it's been really fun with this crowd here to view the eclipse. Wow. That is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, for traveling and for doing this and for, for chatting with us. Yeah. All right. Well, Ariel, we're going to let you go because uh, okay. it's about time to go find Lauren in uh, in Arkansas. Sounds and good. then and then we're going to jump over to Ryan. So we've got. Woo. OK. <laughs> Keep the energy right. up. <laughs> Keep the energy up. All right. Have fun, Ariel. Enjoy the, the last bit of that. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, Lauren, let's see. Here's Lauren's view. And there's our Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Hi! I'm so <laughs> excited. It's getting, sorry, I squeal when I'm excited. But Ariel's was awesome. I'm so looking forward to this. It's getting like really eerie here. It's not quite dusk-like. It's, it's something different, obviously, but we've got a, a uh, fire going and uh, let's see if I can pick this up. There's people watching. The alien is still here. He hasn't blown up yet. It's uh, it's gonna be awesome. Well, it's definitely getting close. Uh, we just saw Ariel uh, go through totality. Um, so it looks like you've got a show in store in a few minutes based on oh, what yeah, I've brought the scene. I think the totality starts in maybe five minutes, I believe. So I'm my telescope, because there's a really slight sliver of the sun left for it to track. I'm it's almost it's almost doing perfectly, but I'm making some small adjustments so that uh, it stays centered on the sun. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely clear, though. Um, how, how long is a totality going to be for you, Lauren? Three minutes and 56 seconds, which is like three times longer than the one that I've seen before. So I'm really pumped. And I heard you talking about the prominence. Would you say mm -hmm. around five o'clock? Yeah. We'll definitely be looking at that as well, but through eclipse glasses. So I have a whole fleet of eclipse glasses here. Well, once well you, not once during you, totality, uh, I, can, I can take my right. glasses off, but yeah. Exactly. Once once totality is in place, you, you shouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, do you think um, you could, could take the solar filter off during totality since it's so long for you? Um, I don't necessarily okay. want to, I don't know, Tom, Tom's my boss. So I'm going to ask yeah. Tom. <laughs> I'm not going to do that on record. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like now is maybe not the time to experiment. And unfortunately it's so hard to test these things because of course we, um, we only have eclipses so often where we can test this kind of stuff. So I think I'm going to leave it on so that Sounds that moment when the, the sun comes back, I'll be fully safe to, to keep observing. That sounds like a good plan. So, um, yeah, if you, if you, if you really want to see totality, you're going to have to, and you're not in the path, you're going to have to wait until some of these, uh, amazing pictures that people are taking get published. So unfortunately it's just, it's, it's not a telescopy thing at that point. So yeah, it's like, a, it's a human experience. These kinds of things always reminds me like why I became an astronomer, because it's so wonderful to be able to see people gather together and just enjoy something with, with strangers, just with the human race, you know, it doesn't matter if you're observing, it's a beautiful sight to see. And then we all get to share that together. So it's, yeah, it's not a telescope thing at that point. It's like a, it's a human experience uh, thing, I think. How has the crowd picked up where you are? Um, we've got, oh my gosh, I just looked back and it's so dark. It's so wild. <laughs> Uh, they're all really excited. We have some kids here, too, that are just really, really excited to see it. And we have some dogs, um, which is, you know, they've they've had eclipse glasses on, which is maybe the cutest thing that I've ever seen, <laughs> um, which is really lovely. Um, but, yeah, it's like a bunch of families, a bunch of people staying at the RV park um, and just people from all over. So it's it's, it's people are starting to gather at the same place now. Before they were kind of like observing all over the park, and now they're all coming together for this wonderful moment. It looks like you're you're mere seconds away now. We Whoa. just have a sliver. Okay, I'm gonna start shouting. Oh my god. Okay, we're one minute away. One minute away. Totality is at 151 local time. My mother is also excited. She says hello. Oh, we are having a great time. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Glad to hear it. So we've got like 30 seconds. Oh my god, this is crazy. Whoa, okay, I gotta, I'm gonna have to like move my chair out of the way so that I can go peek at the Corona. Whoa, don't do what I just did. It's not- Don't do that. Don't put your glasses on to do that. Wow, even though such a tiny little bit is showing, it's still actually bright to the eye. That's Yeah, amazing. it really is. How yes. bright the sun is. Yeah, let this be a warning to everyone. <laughs> I just get so pumped. Okay, so it looks like- 
my god. Still still a sliver, still a sliver. Oh, it's going. I can really see it getting dark where you are. And oh my god. it's gone. It just went That's dark. It. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, we can see the planets. This is amazing. Yes, you can take your glasses off. Sorry. I have to tell people they can take their glasses off. Uh, it looks like sunset there. Oh my god. No, you can take a picture. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. Oh my gosh, let me see. Hold on. Do you take it? Oh. Oh, you can actually see like the hole in the middle with. Wow. Oh my God, y'all. This is incredible. That, that is really cool. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah. Wow. That is oh, yeah. Nice. A couple planets. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I have to whisper because it's so beautiful. I think that's, yeah, that's Venus on the right, and Jupiter on the left. Uh, that's there we amazing. Go. That's better. <laughs> that was an alien. <laughs> Yes. All right, everyone, everyone is super excited. So you're just on my computer audio. You get to hear it all. That's fine. It's nice to hear the crowd. That is really amazing. Oh my God. I see the prominence y'all. That is amazing. Look at like five to seven o'clock on the sun. You can see a prominence. A prominence. <laughs> a comet. I mean, there is a comet, but I can't see it right now. It's a prominence. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. This is so cool, y'all. <laughs> this is just incredible. I'm going to leave it on while it's still totality. This is amazing. Yeah, it's quite the view. Has, has it gotten cooler for you? Colder? Oh, yeah. It's like 10 degrees cooler. It's like, it feels like it's it's nighttime. Um, but I haven't really heard any animals making any reactions. Which is interesting. Yeah, the dogs seem fine, but they're all with their humans. So, mm, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. That no, is. You can't see anything with the glasses. This is amazing, y'all. This is incredible. So, I think you've only got about a minute left. So, yeah. We got a minute left. All right, y'all. I'm going to log off so that I can enjoy the little tiny bit that I have left. Yeah, you do that. And uh, we will switch to Ryan in Bloomington, Indiana. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye. All right. Now we have Ryan. Ryan, my other partner in crime, you are in Bloomington, Indiana. I am. Uh, so we are at the point now that other people have mentioned that I'm a little upset with Sauce for bringing it up. That it's starting to get darker, but in a weird way that you weren't used to, um, where it's not like sunset is happening and shadows are long and colors are starting to get muted. It's like somebody has taken the brightness dial and just turned it down a little. Right. It's a little hard to hear you. Can you either move closer or change your mic? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, you're very you're very muffled. Like you're talking through something. Yes. So that's the problem of having my AirPods and it defaults to those. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Yep, you're okay. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, we're at the point right now that other people have mentioned um, where it's starting to get darker, uh, but it's not like sunset and where the shadows get long and the colors start to uh, kind of change. You get a little more orange and purple. It's like someone has just taken the brightness volume on something and turned it down ever so slightly. It's a very surreal experience. Um, so right now I am on my friend's balcony. They are up on the roof having a party, um, but I needed the Wi-Fi for this. And in Bloomington, we've got people all over. I've been hearing cheers. Uh, so the town is really getting into it. It's awesome. That's really cool. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna take your your view of um, oh which uh, which uh, telescope do you have up? So I have an Odyssey actually. I'll just show. I'm sitting out here with my wonderful mother uh but there's the odyssey and a little cat that is also hanging out okay, uh, so yeah girl. i brought out the odyssey um just for this uh Frank gave me the okay to use uh the fancy odyssey 
uh, for for this event. I'm very excited. It's the first time I've gotten to use it on a solar eclipse. And and Frank says to say hi to your mom from all of us. I will think about it. She's tuning into this, so she's aware now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your view down for just a second because uh, yeah, Ariel and uh, Michael have been sharing some photos. Um, so uh, Ariel has sh shared this with us. So uh, wow. from totality, so you can really see uh, the corona, um, and uh, this was taken by Tyler, and uh, you can see the glare of that that prominence. Uh, coming down from there. So this is, it's pretty neat. And uh, oh, yeah. I know Michael was also taking some photos. Um, and Michael, I'm going to, I'm going to share your photos. I'm warning you. So there's, there's one right before. And you can see there's, he's got some during totality that he took with his SLR. So yeah. um, that's just how lucky is it that it's the forecast for luck for texas has been so bad and then right mm -hmm. at the moment of totality for dallas they get that clear there. that is awesome. that is great look you can really see that prominence <laughs> at the five o'clock position just like flaring out there a little bit that is mm -hmm. perfect so you know the clouds kind of help with that actually yeah they highlight it oh, let me get michael on here we go hi michael hey folks Sorry, it's been hectic over here. I bet. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I I I ducked away from the scopes and and went out to the backyard to eyeball things and brought my, my camera with me. And uh, um, I'll tell you, as bad as the weather's been here, as far as we've been like eighty to ninety percent cover, it was like it was I, I don't know. A mirac it was almost miraculous. Right before the totality hit, the clouds thinned down. And we got we got over at least two out of the three minutes we were supposed to get of of clear you know, either totality that was clear or or kind of like highlighted with these 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 high level wispy clouds instead of the lower level ones that are blocking everything, and it it was it was remarkable. It, it I've never you know this is one of those things you study it all your life you've been interested in it all your life you've seen pictures like this since you were you know, you were this tall you know, of these things and it doesn't prepare you, you know, it, 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 it was just, it, it was, you know, I mean, cause it was also weird to hear, I mean, the birds got quiet and you know, the sky got dark and you started seeing some stars coming out and, and through the, the patches that we could get. But the fact that the, you could, I, I hadn't realized just how dynamic the Corona is while you're watching it. I mean, you see this movement in it. And then we saw there was a, a, some of my pictures, you can see it a little bit here in the one that's on the screen. There's that, what looks like a prominence down in the, around the five o'clock position. And, and once again, this, it wasn't this steady rock steady thing. It, 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 it was a, it had a lively newest to it that you're just, I know you're not used to seeing when it comes to, you know, when you look at the sky, what's often, what defines it is a stillness. You know, things change, but they change slowly, you know, and to actually see the sun as this, this dynamic living thing is, um, I know, is a, is, is a remarkable event. It really is. Yeah, I'm sure. And it, I, it's I'm worth sure noting as I can with you guys, as soon as I, uh, I'm, I'm busy messing around, well, you can see on my screen here, I was busy slurping it out of my SLR and sending it up to here and sending it over there and I'll, I'll get them cleaned up and they'll look uh, a lot better. We'll definitely, Thanks, we'll definitely be sharing some of those out. Michael, thank you so much. Um, enjoy uh, going through all of those photographs and thank you for your, your post totality impressions too. Uh -huh. That's great. Oh, it was, it was a blast. I hope I, I best of which luck to everybody who's on the rest of the track and folks that are still looking forward. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing event. All right. Well, thank you again, Michael. And we'll, we'll be talking to you soon. I'm sure. Okay. Take care. Well, all right. Well, back to Ryan. I just, yeah want to note that what Mike was talking about with those features that the structure is coming off the edge of the sun, even though they look small because the sun's so far away, those are those features are many times the width of the earth. They are huge, enormous coming off the surface of the sun. And so it's they look small and wispy and fragile, but they are violent and, and <laughs> enormous. Yeah, it's really it's one of those things that you can easily take for granted. Um, just because the sun's so far away, it's hard to really capture the size of, of what we're seeing. Yeah, you're getting pretty close there, Ryan. Uh, we yeah. Mean, 
four minutes. What do you think? Yes. So it's supposed to start at two o four fifty one my time, or uh, or I guess three o four fifty one my time. Um, and so yeah, we're we're about three minutes out from that. Uh, it's starting to get darker now. Uh, we're really getting to the point where I almost feel like I can visibly see the change. The camera's not probably not sensitive enough to pick it up, but I feel like I can actually see it getting darker. Actually, if anybody was looking, I was covering the sun because I thought I saw out of the corner of my eyes some clouds, and I was really hoping that that wasn't going to be a problem. No, it's just dark. It's darker than normal, and I keep looking at a blue sky and thinking it looks like gray clouds. Um, yeah. So it's so it's so surreal. I, I like how that's that's been sort of like the, the the theme holding all of the comments I've heard from all of you together is that, you know, it it it's getting dark, but it's not like a, it's not a normal dark. It's a weird, strange, surreal dark that doesn't feel right. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's just it's not like anything that you ever experience in day to day life. Um, and it's. It's really, it, it, it feels like a very a privilege to kind of be here and experiencing this moment. So uh, Ron, who is in Louisiana, he's one of our, our loyal followers and, and loyal watchers, says that he's in central Louisiana and it is 90% coverage. Um, it is darker and cooler and the wind is picked up and the swallows that usually come out around sunset are flying around the skies looking for insects. <laughs> so, I mean, even, even at... 90% coverage, you know, you, you still get these, these amazing changes that happen. Yeah. yeah uh, it, it's amazing. The, uh, the amount that, you know, even 10% is still bright enough to see, but it's, it's enough that you can notice, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah. I've, I've heard some interesting things about the animal behavior. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's the right season for it, but fireflies coming out and, and lighting up, because they, it's they think it's evening. Um, you know, bears or cow? No, I have not bears. Cows going in to sleep uh, when they when the sun <laughs> the totality starts. Um, Four so, minutes yeah. later, like that's the shortest night we've yeah. ever had. Uh, you don't have any cows on that balcony, do you, Ryan? No, there are two cats <laughs> here, uh, and we were warned warned beforehand that they usually get fed in the evening when it, the sun is set. And so the way they let people know is by biting things that uh, you normally don't want bitten. So like your hand or a book you've been reading. So they may end up trying to do that because they think it's time to eat. So we'll see. <laughs> Please keep us updated. Now I am on the edge of my seat. Yeah, no, I, I, I need to it. know. Cause... That's the reason? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I wasn't is... excited until now, but now I am. Now, is, now, now there's, now there's cats dark. involved. And so, you know, you've oh, got, you've yeah. got my attention for sure. They're so cute. I've known them for years. Uh, I love these two cats, Callie and Punky. So shout out to them um, for the, they're um, the real heroes on this balcony. <laughs> Your camera is getting visibly darker now. Uh, as it, we are... it, we're hitting the point where it is. I like keep squinting, expecting that, you know, I, I don't, something feels really wrong. It's almost nighttime. It feels like uh, people, I don't know if you can hear them are screaming, uh, mm -hmm. cheering mom over here has said that she hears a planet uh, <laughs> she sees a planet i hear her saying that um we are moments away i actually see it too it looks like that might be venus um and i think we're i think we're hitting it yep, uh, yeah yep. you're good you're good okay so i want to impress upon people i have been given permission to do this um Oh, my boss okay. has said I can remove the solar filter as long as I'm very careful with the timing. I want to tell people who maybe are doing this with their own telescopes, I don't know what's going to happen. And it's only because we want to see. Do not try this at home, please. No. All right. Ryan so I'm about to take it off. I am a professional astronomer. And. Oh, interesting. The telescope's wow. going to adjust. It's going to adjust its <laughs> brightness. Right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wow, you can see down on the edge. Wow. <gasps> oh, look at it. Look at oh wow, look at the prominences that you can see. I know. Oh, it I I wonder if I have to I wonder if I can maybe manually adjust uh the settings. I'm afraid to touch it cuz I don't want to make it worse, but I feel like manually adjusting it could maybe get uh, a better view. Uh, I just got to say, I think I can actually see some of the pink of the chromosphere, um, which 
I I was I was here for the 2017 eclipse. I never saw that before. I think that might be the prominence actually. Um, let me see if I can scroll the camera of the EV scope down so that everyone else can see what I am seeing because it's just off the screen. It looks like. Um, this is a once in a lifetime experience. Like it, it is, this, this is an experience that I say, if you can ever get to a, a full solar eclipse, do it. Um, yeah, it's telling me object not detected. Uh, so it doesn't know that it is looking at the sun anymore because it is so faint compared to what it's expecting. Oh, so look wow. at that. We have there. two beautiful prominences. I think there's the one at five o'clock and it looks like there was a one at six 30. <laughs> All right, you got you got less than two minutes, Ryan. Just we yeah. don't want to um, melt. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to destroy the TV scope. But this is such a cool thing. Um, thank you, Frog, for for giving me the go ahead to try this. Um, <laughs> before, wow. Save, make sure to save that image on your phone, Ryan, oh. before you uh, go away. Excellent point. Yes, I am going to do that. Um, saving now. Minute 45. I'm getting the countdown from Frank in the background. Yeah, he's yeah. I feel like I I get I asked and I I knew. I was like this is going to be this is going to be a nail biter for him. Oh. Don't worry, Frank. It's going back on now. Pictures have been saved. <laughs> so now that's a two for guys. That uh everyone who's tuning in, you saw a uh full solar eclipse through an EV scope and we've never done that before with uh with an EV scope. <laughs> so that's a first. That that was incredible. I, that was beyond what I thought it would do. I know. It's, it's so amazing how dark it is for you still right now. It's like nighttime. Um, that's what I kept telling people uh, is when they were asking me, what, what is it going to be like? How will I know when I can look at the sun without glasses? The only thing I really say is like, you'll you'll know. Um, it's, it is instant in terms of the lights go out and it feels like nighttime. It looks like nighttime. Um, that's, I was wondering if I can turn my brightness up so you can see me a little bit better. Um, it is, it is just one of those things that when you experience it, you'll know, you'll know what's happening. <laughs> Incredible. Gosh, I'm wondering if I can, I, I have no idea if this is going to work out. Let me see if I can. So, uh, yeah, you can't get a good view of it, but. I mean, you can see off in the distance, it's like twilight, the edge of the shadow happening. Um, I think the last time when I was in the 2017 one, we were on a big hill and I had a massive view uh, in all directions. I could see the sky turning pink. Oh, and here we go. It's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> what? What an experience. I... This is this is probably my favorite part about astronomy is there's really not a whole lot of instances like this that can bring everyone together um, because astronomy feels like um, unless you're into it, it can feel like a field that's far removed from everyday life. And this is this is the event. This is the event that really kind of puts everyone on the same page of how small we are and how much is out there beyond the Earth. Yeah. It, it's it's stunning and your your view <laughs> is still amazing and thank you so much for thank you frank and and ryan for for allowing us to see the the, the actual without through the telescope i mean mike i i have no words i have no words um ian are you there there's ian It yeah, sounds man, so. So again. I know. I know we can't. I know we can't. Uh, I'm going to take this down. I know we can't quite. I'm not talking to Ian, but you can see it getting dark there. Yeah, I do. So Ian. Ian is moments away from totality himself, <laughs> and you can hear the crowd. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. This this is unreal. Yeah, I tried show Ian, Can you hear us Ian? No. I'm gonna guess that's a no. I don't think so. 
Is he, so is he is he's in Dayton, Ohio, so he's northeast of you, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, he like moments moments later he'll hit totality, so he's not that far along, but yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. still they're still using they're still using eclipse glasses, but you can yeah, see they, how dark it has gotten. It looks like they're about one minute out from totality. Yeah, I think they're they're at the point where it was getting really, really dark and you could tell it was about to happen, but you okay, still have that now, yeah. Okay, now you hear us? Yeah, I can hear y'all. All right. Oh, it's be next to it. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so what, here, right back. All right, all right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna keep looking because it's still kind of amazing. Oh, yeah. Right now, it's not. <laughs> she really she really wants to see it through the telescope, and that's not gonna happen yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, I can hear you all. All right. Wow. This is this is unreal. Yeah, those planets just pop out right at you along the ecliptic. It's wild. <laughs> and uh do you, you make sure you take a look and see the prominences. We've seen at least two, uh one towards five, six, and one towards the top. So and I think we've lost him. It is so I'm sure everybody is trying to stream and trying to take pictures. He's just really good at doing a freeze frame. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Did you see the prominences, Ian? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's okay, good. Oh, wow, just like that. Lightness return. That was great. <laughs> awesome. Wow, 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 y'all. Yeah, that's, that's us from Dayton. <laughs> yeah, you guys are you're closer to the edge of the, the totality shadow, so that was a shorter uh, totality than we saw with Ryan, which was really quite long. We're gonna try and get back set it again. <laughs> right? Right, yeah, I know. All right. There's here's here's Ryan's view now. So we're coming out there. Um, so again, Ryan is in Bloomington, Indiana, and had a very long totality, all things considered. Uh, yep. Ian is in Dayton and had a very short one, but still amazing from the sounds of it and a huge crowd. <laughs> that is the benefits of being on a relatively isolated balcony is that uh, people can't like come up and ask questions while you're on live stream. I, I would love that to actually be there to answer people's questions, but it is a well, Ian, we'll, we'll let you get back to talking to people because it looks like you have a crowd and, and so go oh, enjoy yeah. the day. <laughs> have fun. All right. Thanks, Ian. I just want to. I just want to check in. Uh, Ariel is still uh, showing hers before we uh, jump to Amori. Uh, Amori, uh, and uh, you can see this really late stage here where it's very, very moving off. So it's it's pretty neat. Um, let's bring in. Hello, Amori. You're muted. Just so you know, before you try and say something. There we Hi. Go. Can you hear me, everybody? Yeah, we can. Uh, so oh, how's very it? Very stylish. Very stylish. How's it going? Uh, well, the clouds are still here. Uh, we. It's incredible how the internet knows. It knows when it we does. want to talk to someone. It does. It does. It is. It is. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. The stream. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, the crowd is kind of reacting every time there is a hole in the clouds and we can see the moon getting closer and closer to covering the whole sun. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, outside it's getting darker and uh, it's very fun. It's very fun to see. Nice. So you're our last chance here uh, for totality, uh, I think. Yeah. On our path. Do not have high hope on this uh, to uh, <laughs> to see 3D Viscop totality in my location. But uh, yeah, the, the the effect of getting everything dark is really amazing. And it's also getting a bit colder, as you can see. <laughs> and what's what's the what's the reaction of everybody around you? Uh, well, as I said, every time there is a host, uh, you can hear the crowd going, oh, wow, amazing, and this kind of stuff. So 
Yeah. Oh, it's, it's really close. Maybe it's three minutes to totality now. Uh, maybe I can share the crowd with you. Uh, uh, let me see if I can. All right. Um, Ryan, thank you so much for, for being here, for, for doing totality. Did the cats yeah. bite you at all? They did not. They didn't even come outside. It's like they didn't care about the eclipse. I don't understand. Shocking, no culture. Shocking. No yeah, culture. cats. Yeah, so I'm going to go and schmooze and let people know about what they just saw and also answer some questions as well. But thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for hosting this. I know it was a lot of work to put together. It, but it's been worth it. Absolutely worth yeah. it. So uh, safe travels back and uh, have a good rest of the trip. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye, Ryan, Mom. Bye. Bye Ryan. All right. Amori is showing off the crowd a bit since we can't really see anything else. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Everything is out. Uh, everybody is outside uh, the buildings right now. Everybody is looking that direction because the sun up, and you have kind of the sun setting all around. It's very fun. We have everybody is having their setup to try to photograph and capture the event. Pretty amazing. Just the clouds are, are here too, but that's fine. That's all right. Yeah. I hope uh, I hope they canceled some classes for this. I know a lot of places they were rearranging their schedules. There were professional baseball games getting rescheduled. Uh, lots of yes. things. And people worked around this event. Yes, uh, people told me that it was uh, depending on the, the professor to set the student free for the eclipse. But uh, yeah, I think everybody's out there now. This is, I mean, a once in a lifetime opportunity almost. So it's pretty fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Take advantage while you can. Yeah. Um, this will be yeah, so one minute to totality here. It's getting darker every second. I don't know if you can notice on the camera, but. No, we, we absolutely can see yeah. that it's getting darker. Maybe yeah, you can see like other crowd too. Yeah. It's completely covered the sun. That's what I'm right about in about five seconds. Three, two, one, there. And we just hit totality. I just, it is, yeah, that is wild how dark that is. It looks like night suddenly. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the, the phone camera adjusts pretty well, but you can see how much brighter the lights of the building look now compared to what they look like before. It's like 9 o'clock at night. That's amazing. I, I would have to check on the plants and the animal we had for the experiments around. Uh, I would check the, the results of that. Uh, I hope the plants reacted and closed their leaves as they, they, they expected. Yeah, I'm really curious about that. I do want to know what they saw with those plants. I'm, I'm sad for the cloud cover, but at least you're getting the rest of the effect. Yeah. So here we are scheduled to about three to four minutes of total eclipse. And so we should see in two minutes, the sun rising up again. It's a shame because there are some holes over there in the clouds, but not oh. in the right spot. <laughs> so is the way it is. This is an astronomer's life. Yeah. I'm still I'm still excited we got super great views from from Texas because that was not that was not looking good last week when we were talking about it. So yeah, I should have chosen my destination more carefully. <laughs> Maybe in Mexico the sun over there looks great. Yeah, the grass is always greener on the other side. The, the yeah. sky is always clearer on the other side. And you can only take your best guess. Oh, it does really look dark there. Hopefully people who are driving are driving carefully, paying attention to the road instead of the yeah, I think that, happening overhead. As you can see, they, they stopped the buses and everything uh, just for the eclipse. Maybe it's for security, maybe for people to kind of witness the event. I don't really know. I think uh, Canada declared like an emergency state just for the eclipse. So, wow. yeah. Hopefully there are no real emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I don't know if you can see the back over there, but it looks so beautiful in real life. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It does look like a sunset or a sunrise over there. That definitely, definitely has this like strange twilight effect where it's not like real twilight. It's, it's so weird. I have to, I'm going to have to travel for, a, for an eclipse. All right. And yeah. so now the sun, yeah, the sun should be back up. It started right now. Oh yeah. All right. Well, Amori, thank you so much. I, I'm sorry that you didn't actually get to see like the sun, but I'm glad that you got to see all of the effects. And uh, you let me know what happens with the plants. I'm very curious. Yeah, now. for sure. I'll let you know. All right, fantastic. All right, thank you again. And uh, we're going to switch to uh, Athena. Welcome in. Here we go. Athena. Hello. Hello. How are you, Beth? Hello, Tom. Hi. How's Athena it is in in Dallas, and and we're just we're we want to talk to you and find out you know how was the eclipse where you were. Well, it was pretty incredible. A lot of clouds, so that kind of changed the coloring a little bit. I've noticed. I'm not sure if you've had anyone else hop on here, but I think it just confused my telescope a little bit trying to find it and then uh, stay focused. Um, but it was awesome. I mean, even with some clouds, uh, we were still able to capture that moment um, of seeing the corona. I got some really, really cool stuff on, um, yeah, on, on my telescope and on the iPad. I also streamed it to my computer as well. Um, and it was, it was cool. I'm in the woods. So I heard a lot of animal sounds. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> So, so you are you are coming to us live from your getaway cabin in Dallas, Texas. I understand. Yes. Yep, that is my cabin right here. Uh, it's actually really cool because you can see there's wheels. It's so it's kind of like a trailer, um, and it is super super cool. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them, and so there's a whole community of people with their telescopes also watching the eclipse at the same time. Oh, that's really neat. And uh, uh, so, how long was totality from from your location? It was only about a minute and a half. I think the total was like a minute and 40 ish seconds is what I remember um, that I looked up. But yeah, it wasn't long. It was not long. It was as soon as it got like pretty dark and, and you noticed it was getting really, really dark um, and got to enjoy it. All of a sudden it started to get a little bright again. So not super long, but still just as cool. <laughs> and, and did your live stream go well? It did. Yes. Yep. Went live on Instagram, had uh, two cameras going and then the telescope um, was mainly sharing just like this, kind of with the iPad, would flip the camera around. Uh, but it went well, had a lot of people viewing from around the world who were not able to see the eclipse in person. So that was that was very exciting to know that, um, yeah, they got to sort of watch it from my neck of the woods, literally. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, how's and, everything uh, going with you guys in the stream? Oh, it's 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 been great, honestly. We've we've had amazing views. Um, Texas, even you know, to the extent that that yeah, you've had some clouds in Dallas. We've had people in Dallas and Austin, um, but we got great views from both places. We got a uh, great view from uh, Arkansas, um, not so great views from Canada, but you know, got to see the the totality, the darkness of it. So it was. It's been really amazing. I'm I'm suddenly deeply, deeply envious of everybody who has was in the path. So <laughs> Oh no, you didn't travel. I see it says San Jose, California. So Yeah. Someone someone had to stay and run the show, man. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> we thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, Athena, I have to ask, you were with us during the annular eclipse live stream in October. Mm -hmm what what's the difference here well, you did both <laughs> yeah big big difference i mean what i think i probably enjoyed the most was especially with the clouds um every now and then i flip my my camera around my iphone camera and i put my glasses on even though i did have another filter for another iphone camera but when i very flipped that around there was a moment where i just was a little bit delayed putting the the um glasses on 
And through the clouds, you could see just like, it looked like a black sun. I mean, it was like the dark moon right in front and then the corona behind it, um, which I was able to capture on, on my telescope. And I was able to see it through my glasses, but just that kind of accidental moment that happened where like my iPhone lens, thank you so much for surviving, uh, mm -hmm. caught the eclipse without a solar filter, which no, I do not recommend, do not do that. Uh, it will damage your lens as well as your eyes. Um, it caught a brief moment and I was like, oh my gosh, this just looks insane. So very different than uh, the annular eclipse where I wasn't even in the path of annularity. So I couldn't even see the ring of fire. Um, so this was really a wonderful experience to be able to, to witness this compared to the annular eclipse. So uh, things have uh, kind of changed for you a little bit since you did our annual eclipse. So you're you're now on a TV show communicating about science? Yeah. So I've been on um, a couple of shows in the past, but I have this really fun, fun new segment on CBS Mission Unstoppable, um, which is all about STEM and helping kids get more involved in STEM, helping encourage young girls pursue STEM. And I have a segment on there called Astro Athena. Um, and we talk about different things. They're quick two minute segments. Um, one of them is about space tourism. Another one is really kind of just tips of how to stargaze that I've learned over the years of really growing up in a light polluted city and being now somewhere where I actually have a lot of stars in the night sky, actually out here, such a great location for stargazing. I imaged some incredible stuff last night on Unistellar um, on my um, Equinox. I caught so many amazing, beautiful pictures. So um, yeah, so so I'm on that show now. Uh, I talked about space. Uh, you know, why not? Love this stuff so cool. and uh, got very fortunate, feel very lucky to, um, to, be, to be on the show. It's hosted by Miranda Cosgrove. So I grew up being mm -hmm. like her number one fan watching iCarly and Drake and Josh. So <laughs> it's a really awesome, awesome thing to sort of yeah to, to be working it's a on. it's a really it's a really cool show i've i've uh i've done a live stream with them before so it's they're really fun that's oh, a yes. great great bunch of people um congratulations on that are you i understand you are also uh working on an astronomy degree yes yes i am attending arizona state university online um and they have a wonderful online opportunity or you could get a bachelor's degree in astronomy and planetary science um, and actually, the class that I did this semester um, uh, with Professor Karen Nierman, she is incredible. It actually is a how to communicate astronomy and planetary science class. So we've like learned how to create our own podcast. We've like learned how to make science videos. And I'm like, this is right up my alley. This is so awesome. Uh, so it's all about how to be a science communicator. Uh, and it's been such a wonderful experience. So, so. Being that you are now a science communicator and, and actively doing all of these things, um, what would you tell people who want to go into astronomy, whether they want to do it as a hobby or as a career? What, what piece of advice would you give? What encouragement would you give? Um, I guess number one is like just do as much backyard astronomy as possible, um, because like I think there was a really long time where I wasn't. I didn't have a telescope. I wasn't outside at night, just like observing the stars and that reconnection every time I go out and do that. And we'll be out for like 20 minutes to three hours. Um, just like, yeah, further reinforces my love for astronomy, space exploration and communicating all of it. Um, so I'd say whether you're going into it as a hobby or you're going into it professionally, continually, um, get outside and do your own observing in your own backyard, get a telescope, like a unistellar equinox or odyssey. And um, it's just such a wonderful way to just, yeah, be able to learn also um, about the cosmos. You could learn so much. Um, and there's like a whole opportunity to do citizen science. And that's such a wonderful thing too, because if you're in the hobby section of it for your life and you wanna kind of move into a career section for your life, I don't have six sections, but you know what I mean. Um, if you want to move into really pursuing it as a career, to do it as as a hobby and as like, you know, just passionately, uh, it's only going to help reinforce doing it. Um, yeah, as, as a career, whether you go do research uh, or do communication on TV. So I would say, yeah, both, both of those. And then find community, which again, I mean, you know, Unicellar has a whole community. <laughs> with SETI. Uh, so, so it's it's so incredible. The SETI Institute, absolutely love it. Go to conferences, go to museums, volunteer. Those are some of the first things that I did to learn how to really communicate to the public. So um, I would, 
yeah, I would recommend those, those few things and I hope it helps. All right. Well, Athena, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day and to, to join us and talk to us and uh, enjoy the rest of your time uh, looking at the stars tonight and getting more, more pictures. And as always, uh, follow uh, Athena on at Astro Athens pretty much everywhere. So TikTok, Insta, uh, Twitter, whatever it's called this, this week. And uh, she's <laughs> communicating amazing science. Oh, well, thank you so much, Beth. Thank you to Tom. Thank you to the whole community that are on here. Um, yeah, without you guys, we, we wouldn't be able to form such a, a powerful, powerful community here. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the eclipse. There's still some left. <laughs> some Will do. Talk. All right. Thank Bye, you, guys. Athena. Bye. Bye. All right, really quickly, uh, we have Amir Caspi coming on, who is a researcher, but uh, Frank has a friend with him right now. Uh, Frank, who is your friend? Hi. Yeah, I have a special guest with me today. Hi. What's your name? Matthew. Matthew? Yes, Matthew. So you came here to see the eclipse? Yes, I came yeah. here to see the eclipse, uh, and I took a, a really good picture of it, and, I, and I'd like to share it. Okay, show us a picture. Okay. Absolutely. Let's go. So you need to show it here. Oh, wow. That is wow. amazing. Good job, Matthew. That's excellent. What did you Thank think you. about the eclipse? Uh, I thought it was uh, like a once in a lifetime thing. And I would probably never see this for like another thousand years. So I took my chance and took the picture while I could. Did you, did you send a picture to someone? Yes, I sent it to my grandma, my mom, and my dad. Good. All right. Well, we Fantastic. Have a new here. Well, Good work, good work. And uh, did you? How did? How was the eclipse? Did you enjoy? Are you? Yes, I I enjoyed it a lot. Oh, good. good. Awesome. Did you freak out a awesome. bit? <laughs> yeah, I was like, why is it getting all dark all of a sudden? <laughs> is it getting dark all of a sudden? All right. Well, thank you, Matthew. Thank you for coming. You're it was welcome. nice. I take your phone back because I don't want to leave your phone. Thank you again. All right. Well, cool. thank you, Frank. <laughs> I'll have you back in a couple of minutes. I'm going to okay. chat with the uh, Amir okay. right now. So thank you. See you. Hi. All right, Amir, welcome in. Hi. How are you Hello. doing? Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, Amir. Um, tell us who you are and what you Whoops. do. Sorry, I'm just adjusting my camera here. Uh, I am Amir Caspi. I'm a research scientist at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado. Um, I didn't put my parenthetical location because I work in Boulder, but today I'm in Dallas, Texas, in the Cotton Bowl, which you can see behind me, where we just about, uh, however long ago it was now, half a, almost an hour ago, experienced uh, the total solar eclipse. And I have to tell you, it was touch and go all morning, uh, but, uh, but, it came through, the clouds parted, and we saw totality for about three, three and a half minutes here. Fantastic. I'm gonna I'm just gonna pull up uh, Ariel is still sharing her screen. And so this is this is the current view from Dallas, Texas from her rooftop. So there is still partial eclipse happening where you are. That's right. Yeah, people uh, people have, are starting to go away now. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, don't don't look at the partial after totality, but it's still something fun to look at. The moon is still covering the sun, uh, and uh, it's still an amazing sight. So you you got to see totality. So the clouds gave you a break. Indeed, it was overcast basically the entire morning. Uh, the sun peaked in and out of clouds. But about half an hour before totality, we were able to get a break long enough to align our telescope, which you see back there somewhere. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, we managed to, uh, to get on totality. We started taking data, even though there was a cloud that literally came in 10 seconds before totality. Uh, but it was a small one. It was a little baby cloud and it moved away. Uh, and we got over three minutes of totality. It was amazing, cloud-free for those three minutes. Uh, you can see really bright prominences, uh, red, you know, those red loops that appear above the solar limb uh, mm -hmm. that is material from the solar surface that's bubbled up. Uh, and those are really easy to see with your naked eye. And of course you saw that, that crown-like structure, the corona, which uh, you can't see at any other time. It was really a unique experience. 
So what are some of the efforts that you've led to observe today's eclipse? You're working on a couple different projects. Uh, what are they and, and what are they doing? Yeah, so I was uh, basically monitoring two different experiments today. Uh, the first one is what you see behind me. This uh, telescope right here behind my thumb uh, is one of the outreach stations for the Citizen Kate 2024 experiment, which is a distributed citizen science or participatory science experiment where we had 35 teams of amateurs, volunteers, uh, students ranging from middle school to graduate school, educators, professors, uh, engineers, retirees, people who are not professional scientists, uh, they were outfitted with 35 of these stations, identical telescopes, cameras, mounts, and uh, computers. We gave them training. And so as totality uh, swept over every one of them, in fact, uh, it's still sweeping over a few of them right now uh, up in, uh, in northern New England, I believe, uh, then uh, they're able to make observations of totality in exactly the same way. And uh, after the fact, we're going to take all of these data and put them together to make hopefully a one hour long movie of totality, maybe punctuated by a few clouds here and there. Uh, the second experiment I was monitoring on my computer right back there, uh, NASA flew two WB-57 jets. These are jets from the 1950s that have been outfitted with really long wings. They can fly at altitudes of 50,000 feet or higher, basically higher than any commercial uh, jet. And uh, they were outfitted with special telescopes in the nose cones. My experiment was on one of the aircraft, uh, an instrument called SAMI. It was built by NASA Langley Research Center uh, from the SciFly team there. And it's a suite of infrared telescopes and visible light telescopes mounted in the nose cones so that we could actually take uh, data on the solar corona in the infrared wavelengths that we cannot see from the ground because the atmosphere blocks and absorbs and also emits in those wavelengths. We have to be up in the air at 50,000 feet to make those observations. Uh, the other experiments were from the University of Hawaii and Virginia Tech University, also studying the corona and Earth's ionosphere uh, the ionic, uh, ionized region uh, in Earth's upper atmosphere to see how it responds to the eclipse. Wow, uh, super interesting. Um, so, so you mentioned the the infrared. So these are kind of colors, wavelengths of light that are longer, more red than the eye can see, right? Um, so, so what do you what do you think? How should the sun look different in those other wavelengths than what we see in the visible range? You know, that's a very good question and one that it's actually very difficult to answer because there have been so few observations of the sun in these particular infrared wavelength ranges. In the near infrared, close to the visible light that we can see, you can actually make observations from the ground relatively easily, well, easily, uh, as easily as you can make any solar observations from the ground. Uh, but in the short wave infrared, a little bit longer, more redder, more infraredder, uh, and, uh, uh, and the mid wave infrared, which is uh, the colors of light that you, know, you and I would glow in if we looked at ourselves with a thermal camera, those you cannot see from the ground. They're just blocked by the atmosphere. The atmosphere also glows in those wavelengths. So there have been very few observations of the sun at those wavelengths of light. Uh, the, the most recent couple of, uh, of measurements were uh, when we flew the WB-57s in 2017 uh, and made an image in this mid-wave infrared region. Um, and uh, of course, some of our colleagues from the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics are also flying infrared uh, imagers and spectrometers on board the NSF's Gulfstream 5 that's specially mm -hmm. outfitted for science. Uh, so before that, I think there were only like one or two observations in all of history before that. So it's really difficult to say what you want to see. But uh, it turns out uh, the sun actually looks uh, fairly similar to what you would expect, except different things are bright than what you might expect. Okay. So still learning, still lots to learn there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's really interesting to understand what the sun is doing in these infrared wavelengths because they could be really powerful scientific tools to do things, make new measurements that we haven't been able to make. Uh, so what we learned from this eclipse, uh, both from ourselves and our colleagues, uh, we hopefully will be able to use that for not just future eclipses, but hopefully future instruments that we can fly on balloons or in space to really make 
uh, powerful observations for the future. Nice. Looking forward to it. And out of out of curiosity, how did you end up uh, studying the sun uh, rather than anything else? And what what intrigued you about that? What got you interested in doing uh, solar astronomy as opposed to anything else? Yeah. So, you know, I actually grew up sort of wanting to do high energy astrophysics. I wanted to study black holes and neutron stars. And uh, and I got interested in, in viewing the X-ray universe. Uh, and when I got into graduate school, my advisor at the time uh, who was a solar X-ray observer said, hey, you know what? You can study the same physics that happens everywhere else in the universe, but you can see it right here at home and get a lot of light because the sun is bright compared to, for example, all of the stars that are so far away or black holes that are far away. So uh, I got intrigued and I said, you know what? That sounds good. And it, it turns out that it was the best thing that I could have done because by learning about our sun, we can learn about other stars. We can learn about the same kinds of processes that happen around black holes and accretion disks and active galactic nuclei. Uh, we can learn about other stellar systems and whether life could form around other stellar systems. Uh, and of course, we learn about how the sun affects our stellar system that we happen to live in. Uh, and it's important to know what the sun is doing because uh, it's the source of all of our energy. But it, that also means that uh, it can put out dangerous radiation that we need to know how to deal with as a spacefaring society. Well, that that is really exciting, and and I am I'm looking forward to the results of your experiments and and all of your observations. So um, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about it. And and I know that you know this has been a very busy time for a lot of the solar astronomers. So I'm so glad that we 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 managed to find one that could talk to us about things. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much, and I hope. Uh, Everyone got a great view either online or in person. And uh, the next one's in 2026 over Iceland and Southern Europe. So uh, book your plane tickets. All right. I, I think I, I may I may just do that. So, so Amir, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. My and pleasure. Uh, have you. a great rest of the day and in, enjoy what's left of, of the partial eclipse. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amir. All right. Well, we are we are getting to the end of our three hours. I don't know how this has happened, um, but uh, I'm going to show I have really quickly. I have an updated GIF from Peter Yeniskins. So this one's in color and you can really see that shadow moving across. So um, very, very cool to see that one from space. So mm -hmm. there you go. And uh, so that's nice. Um, so. <laughs> Who all have we got that's available to come back on screen? Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Lauren, Ariel, uh, Franck, anybody want to come back on to chat? There's Lauren. We'll grab her. Franck's running back. It is the Hi, end friends. of the show. There we go. Hello. What's up, Franck? How are you? See, you do the you do that thing and the balloons come up. I, what did you do? How did you balloon like this? Oh she, always, <laughs> she always find a way to make some weird things. I, it doesn't okay. work for me. I, I don't. You. I don't know. Like, I maybe that's a is that a built-in thing for Streamyard? I haven't seen that before. That's weird. Okay. No idea, but I like it. <laughs> uh, oh, there's Ariel. Uh, Amore, uh, Stefan, would either of you want to come back on too? We can we can have all the peoples on now. So. Yeah, yeah, we've still got a parcel here, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah let me let me. Uh, left for us. There's Ryan wanted to spend some time on the roof, so I'm not sure. There's Michael. There was Michael. <laughs> so yeah, Lauren's mm -hmm. Lauren's still got a a partial eclipse run in here. So does and Ariel's got. I'll switch to Just Ariel really quickly. Ariel's got a little tiny bit. Yeah. So, but she also has a, a, a big screen. So, and there's Stefan. Hello, Stefan. Hello. Birds are still super active. Birds are still super active. So, great. so Lauren, you're calling dibs on Iceland, huh? <laughs> Did um, the other? So, I was preparing for the 2045 eclipse. Yeah. Dibs on Trinidad and Tobago. 
and oh, right. um, Turks and Caicos 20 ish years in advance so <laughs> that I could go there. But I just heard Amir talking about Iceland and I would like to call dibs on that too. <laughs> Just every I think, single I think one, basically. Yeah, I think I'll, yeah. I think I'll still be young I mean, enough to handle Iceland. I don't. I don't know about. I, I could definitely be convinced oh, no. to go to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> I just I've not mention that before, and I would love to go back. I think Bess really need to to see one next. Uh, ne yeah. the, the next one. So we are shipping. We are sending <laughs> Bess wherever we need to. Arctica, yeah. whatever. You, she's going I, then. She's going to stay. I have another friend who's like, you have to go see one. I will help fund fund this process. I'm like, all right, all right. I'll, you know, Good. anybody wants to send me to, to uh, Iceland, I'm in. Mm -hmm. all right. Well, yeah. the extra bonus with Iceland is you get a, you have better, about a better shot of seeing the Northern Lights than almost any place else. So, well, Iceland yeah. is, is definitely like, when, when I talk about the bucket list, Iceland is number one. So, oh. you know, it's, if it's there's a an eclipse place, sure. and Northern Lights and Iceland, I'm in because, you mm -hmm. know. The, ge the astronomy part of me gets satisfied that way. And then the geology part of me gets satisfied by the fact mm -hmm. that, you know, it's uh, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge right. and the oh, border yeah. between two plates and there are volcanoes. So, Thank you. yes. Right. Definitely on my bucket list. <laughs> it is an incredible place. I wonder, I, I don't know the answer to this. If you could see the Northern Lights during an eclipse. I, I don't know if they uh, yeah. need the sun to be down <laughs> low on the horizon or not, but uh, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you right. need to okay, a new a new challenge. We have a new challenge. Mm -hmm. We have not done enough yet. Good. <laughs> <laughs> new science questions to to answer. Uh, Julia Brawler, thank you so much for the stars on uh, Facebook. Always appreciated. Um, and thank you, of course, everybody who has been watching and sticking with us for these last couple hours. Um, Absolutely. Um, fabulous job, all of you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. My, so I, there aren't enough words. Frank, Frank organizing this, making the telescopes happen. Lauren coordinating all of the all of these processes and, and running a Google Doc like a champ. Um, thank you. And scheduling. Um, and of course, you know, Michael, Ariel, Stefan, also to Ian. Oh, there's a Maury. I see you now. You're here. I'll add you as well. Hey, I'm Maury. <laughs> So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for, for sharing your views, good, bad, and different. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like you all enjoyed. Amori, you answered my question in the background. So did the plants close up? Unfortunately not. Uh, they were supposed to close like this. And they told me it was not cold enough and long enough. But mm -hmm. usually they close at night. But like three mm -hmm. minutes of totality is not long enough for them to close. So. They had this whole setup to monitor the temperature, but yeah, it just didn't happen. Oh, that's too Science. bad. We, they, you know, we learned something. That's a yeah. point, right? <laughs> a, a negative result is still a result. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I also heard from some people who are watching the eclipse kind of over a, a hilltop that's over here that the deer started coming out when it started getting dark. Mm -hmm. got really confused, and then totality ended and they were like oh no <laughs> and and ran back out so and the birds started chir chirping as soon as totality ended maybe thinking that it was morning so it sounds like there was some some nature reactions uh that i just didn't happen to yeah. catch but no plants closing though that would have been super cool hello ian thank you howdy howdy y'all <laughs> gang's right. gang's pretty much all here now um so uh, let's, I'm going to start with Lauren. What was sort of like your highlight moment? <laughs> highlight moment? Oh man, totality. That was just incredible. Um, being able to see the prominence, but also um, Ryan taking off the solar filter. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was absolutely incredible. I was, I texted him. I was like, I'm so proud of you. I don't know why. <laughs> but it was just amazing. It was so, so cool to see that for the first time. Nobody else has seen that before. We all got to experience that live with them. So that was really awesome, too. Uh, Frank, what about you? How was uh, your crowd has cleared out? I see your, your party yes. has ended. Uh, yes, what was what was the, the highlight for you? Uh, probably the totality. But frankly, what I re I'm going to remember for the rest of my life was like seeing through the clouds. The, the protuberance that was uh, that was something and um experiencing it for the second time it's you know what to expect so you take the time to uh 
to really enjoy it. The first time I was really like, um, oh my God, we, we're not going to see it. Uh, I mean, it was, there were people around. It was very different. This time, because I knew what to expect, I basically enjoyed it. And I admire and enjoy this moment without trying to overanalyze it. That's what I will say. So, love it. Definitely. Thank you to my friend uh, Rich and Dan for uh, having us here. Definitely. Yes, thank you. Thank you to Frank's friends and for the setup, for the, the I mean, the lovely branded mic, the amazing camera work, um, that whole Astro setup. Forge for helping with the camera as well. Yeah. I mean, yes. Uh, thank you yeah. to Astroforge. Um, thank you to Starlink for the the uh, Starlink dishes that we had, and of course to Unistellar for all of these amazing mm -hmm. Unistellar EV scopes, Equinoxes, uh, and and uh, that we've Odyssey. had. Odyssey. Thank you. I was like, I, there's one more. <laughs> um, some someone get me one. Anyway, uh, I'll just just leave that there. Uh, all right, uh, Ariel. What was the highlight for you? You you had you had some some challenges there early on. So yeah. how, did it, how did it go? I mean, I think my highlights really kind of surround the challenges. I was here with a, a group of friends who I was really excited to show the eclipse. They hadn't seen one before, and we had a lot of clouds in the morning. And I was like, I swear the eclipse is beautiful. You're just gonna have to go see it again another time. <laughs> Uh, but then it just cleared up and we got to see like all the structure we got to see the prominences um i don't know that happening and it happening kind of all of a sudden was a highlight for me and like them being able to see it was really cool and now we all want to see one right away we've been talking mm -hmm. about 2026 one in spain vacation time in spain <laughs> sounds good to me <laughs> but i Oh, we, we're losing. We're losing Ariel. I think her connection. She's already out of Spain. She's left. She's on her way to Spain. She's heading out. She's, she's done. <laughs> well, there you are. Am I back? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So that, and then Ryan taking off the filter. That was the best. I wish I got to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You gotta get. You gotta get permission from the big boss. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, 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 Michael, how about you? What? what oh, well, I mean, <clears throat> I'll, I'll echo everybody on the totality, but the uh, the special part for 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 myself and my family here was, I mean, the clouds have been miserable. Okay, we we had a, an awful time. Uh, it was ninety percent overcast. I mean, and dense overcast. Where most of the time, I couldn't even tell where the sun was. And then, right after the time when totality was supposed to start started seeing this really thick cloud just move out of the way. And sure enough, boom, there blows through the whole, the whole, you know, the totality with the corona. And it's, you know, it's moving, it's scintillating. And then you can see the promise around five o'clock on that. It it was um it it, you know, there should have been you know, like you know, you ready for like the you know the angels to be singing kind of moment. You know what I mean? It was, you know, just you know, you know, that that kind of unveil, you know, it 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 just it just uh it just uh came out like that and it was really just amazing to see we we were we were all you know blown away it was it was uh we were like we had been so pessimistic on how it was gonna go and to have to have it find get the right three minutes you know was was just remarkable yeah that definitely that definitely made a difference i i know i know lauren mm -hmm. and i were discussing over the weekend contingency plans and you know <laughs> who we who we go to when things fall apart and break and mm -hmm. you know it, it nothing nothing really did so i'm i'm very excited so i'm, uh, I'm just gonna say one thing about the the weather because all week i've been fighting against that you go into an, an astronomical event it's rare it's something exceptional it's an opportunity you book your flight, you go. Even if people tell you, oh, it's going to be stormy or whatever, because that's what I got when I arrived here in Austin. Mm -hmm. But yeah. people were trying to push me to go somewhere else and to be driving erratically and maybe missing the entire experience just because of that. So one piece of advice I'm going to give to people, and this is what I learned as an astronomer, is you want to observe an astronomy event, an astronomical event, you set a time, you set what you plan everything like mm -hmm. if it's going to happen and you don't look at the weather pattern and you don't have this converse, endless conversation about it because you never know whether it's very unpredictable and, okay. and that's that's the beauty of it. So that's right. So Mike, yeah, 
Yeah. Was, well, <clears throat> I said I sent you guys a big stack of, uh, of of pictures from Totality, so I hope yeah. uh, hope people enjoy good. that. Nice. Well, and it was as as Steve Trimberger said, you know, he he made the decision not to run away from Waco for the same reason, <laughs> you know, Frank was mentioning is is yeah. it, you you could end up lot you know running around not seeing anything, and if you'd stayed put, it would have been fine. So, it's it's like when you get lost in a store, stop moving, mm -hmm. wait for the other person to find you. <laughs> um, if you're both searching, it's not going to work. Stefan, the weather is still gorgeous there in Raleigh. Yeah, and I know you didn't have a, a total eclipse, but what was the highlight for you anyway? Yeah, I, I mean, aside from Ryan taking the filter off, <laughs> um, it was, I, I was possibly surprised. Like, I thought, you know, I wouldn't really get sort of this feeling of like something strange going is going on here, right? Um, but, but you could still feel kind of the, or see the light kind of dimming and like the birds literally like, like it was evening for them. So they just mm -hmm. started going. Um, now they're finally quieting down again. So it was, it was still like, even though I was only at 80%, it was, it was still pretty, pretty great. Amori, uh, how about you? I know you got, you got clouded out, but you still got the, the effect of totality. So what was, what was the highlight there? Yeah. So because I, I was clouded at the whole event, totality was not my high point. My high point was when it first was the little hole in the cloud when we first saw a little bit of the sun covered by the moon. Totality, yeah, it was dark everywhere. But the reaction we all got when we first see the moon covering just a little bit of the sun, that was my high point for me. I'm I'm glad there was there was such a highlight since since yeah. and it, and since the plants didn't close and the the clouds didn't clear up, you had to have something. So I'm 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 happy for you, Ian. How about you? You've you've been at, had a big crowd there. Oh yeah, this was a great turnout. And sorry, can everybody hear me? Okay. <laughs> sorry about the mic yep. issues earlier. Um, but yeah, yeah, this was a very large turnout over here at the Dayton Heritage. Uh, it just an amazing experience. This was my first total eclipse. Still kind of processing it, but it's a, it was a very special experience. I'm glad I got to share it with everybody here. Well, thank you, thank you, Ian, for for joining us. Frank, you have Rich with you. Rich, thank you. Ah, no, thank you. That was awesome to help bring this uh, to the world. Well, thank you for 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 making Frank look so good. <laughs> no, we were. It was it was stuff. It was stuff. We have to work a lot on that. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And Tom, how about you? Was Paul. there anything, any highlight for you you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, you know, watching it from afar, I think just the uh, cooperation here to, to have be able to combine the views and the experiences of so many different people from, you know, spread out and some in remote places, some in the middle of big groups. Um, I think, you know, this is kind of where technology has gotten us now, where we can share these kinds of experiences, even if you can't physically go to the place. I think so, you know, someone's has said something like 44 million people live along the, the path of totality and maybe a hundred million had actually traveled there. Um, but there's still billions of people who don't get to be near this. Uh, so I think having this opportunity is, is pretty amazing. And then there's the Corona with the filter off was just, you know, next level. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to have words for that. I mean, this has just been this has just been an amazing experience, and I am so grateful to all of you for for helping me make this happen. Um, to you know, Lauren for helping organize, all of you for for doing the thing, Frank for making sure that everybody had things that they needed to have, and for just having this great setup. That's that's really awesome, Frank. You you still you look amazing, and uh, you know, happy birthday to Frank and I. We survived, and uh, <laughs> thank you. And, uh, you know, this is this has been great and I have really enjoyed it. And uh, again, I want to give uh, shout outs to the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation for uh, helping us uh, fund this amazing program and making this happen. Um, thank you to Starlink for providing the Starlink uh, dishes for some of our people who are out there. Thank you to Unistellar, of course, our partners in citizen science and also uh, making sure everybody had telescopes that they could they could have to, to go see all of this. And thank you to the Unistellar Citizen Science community uh, for, for participating. You guys 
you are all so amazing. So thank you for, for joining us and for traveling and for doing all of these things. So, and of course, I have to thank our viewers from around the world. It was a global audience. I am so glad we could bring this to you. For those of you who are not in the path of totality, I hope we brought you a little bit of the magic of being there. And uh, as always, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. So if you want to help us support all these programs, you can head over to SETI.org and uh, drop us a, a few happy little pennies to help us uh, keep funding these kinds of programs as well. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And thank you to everybody who helped behind the scenes and who has been here. I'm sure I forgot someone, but it has been an amazing experience. So from the bottom of my heart, awesome. thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Take care, everybody. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye.